Hey folks. Hey folks. Welcome, welcome to Anarcho Poco. I started the stream a little early because I told a bunch of people to show up, and uh, we'll just kind of see how this goes. People show up. I mean, they, all those guys on the list, they're they're showing up. Uh, I what my hope is is that they don't all show up at the same time because it might be a bit of a clusterfuck. Uh, pardon my language, but we have. Um, I had a camera, a proper like nice AV setup here this morning when I did my check with the the podcast team here at Anarcho Poco, and there was a nice camera set up that had a nice wide shot so that if we do end up with four people on a microphone at once that will work in the shot but the camera was gone when i got here so i can't explain it uh that i, I i'm sure it was just a miscommunication with some folks and that's okay that's forgivable but anyways that's what happened and so i'm just kind of playing with my laptop um to can you guys hear me okay let me know if the sound is okay is the volume low? Thank you for saying that. How is it better now? How's it better now? Um, so yeah, the camera's gone, uh, but that's okay because we can do this. And this is what I do from home when I stream, right? So it's not that big of a deal. How do I sound now? Is that a better? Is it is it better though now? Let me turn the master up here. Is that better? How's that sound now, guys? Let me know. Too low still, Harold, or is it the lag? Let me. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait. Sounds good now. Okay, fantastic. Still too low? Good now. S sound is super low still. Are you sure you're just not a late commenter? How's it sound now? I'm just going to keep talking and you guys just tell me. It's a pretty ad hoc setup here, but it is kind of cool, actually, I have to say. Good audio? Better, better, much better. Fantastic. Rogue Spear's in the house. He'll be uh, helping us. Rogue Spear, please, uh, you know, just delete any annoying trolls, <laughs> please. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, we're looking good now. So we've got a pretty sweet show tonight. So let me just tell you guys a little bit about where I am right now. I'm at, I'm in Acapulco, Mexico. And uh, my, oh, my wife just texted me that sounds better too. Thanks, babe. Um, I'm in Acapulco, Mexico at Anarco Poco. I've been invited to this conference for many years and uh, the just stars never aligned, but they aligned this time. And so I'm here. It's awesome. So many good speakers here. So many good speakers um, uh, coming up real quick here. Um, we've got Marjorie Wildcraft. And I actually noticed I just spelt her name wrong on the stream. Sorry, Marjorie. Oh I put Marjorie without an R. Uh, and, yeah. And so and you guys, and let me know too how, how Marjorie's sound uh, is as she talks. But, you know, what we're going to do tonight is, is this is just... Um, this is the Anarcho Poco Variety Show. Hi, everybody. This is Marjorie Wildcraft, yeah. guys. If you don't know her, you know, uh, you should. Where have you been you, all yeah, my life? If you know about my <laughs> stuff, and you, and you know, you, especially my older stuff where I was mostly just doing farming stuff, this woman, let me tell you, man, she's been disseminating the uh, the garden gravy for many years. Yeah. And, uh, I love it. Oh, my God. Uh, she's also a cool awesome person to hang out with and we we've had a couple good bullshitting sessions here at anarcho poco and so on tonight's uh that's how we do it yeah, it's like that it's a, bit, okay. it's a weird yeah on tonight's uh anarchy variety show let me just first tell you a little bit of who we got in store so to start we got marjorie wildcraft in the flesh we're gonna have uh dr andrew kaufman showing up. oh yeah we're gonna have Andy. david avocado wolf show believe up. it the wolf the wolf i see his talk today was banger he like, was he, he, he was, was on so it so high energy he's like a he's like a, a, a tony robbins meets a shaman <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, like, a, like a mystical shaman uh we're gonna have alex zek coming in we're gonna have oh there's andrew kaufman now there's him um we're going to have mike winter coming in we're gonna have dave weiss flat earth dave coming in Oh God! And so we'll see where this I will, goes. I will. I will leave before then. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we're just getting her started here. So how are you doing, sister? I'm doing great. Oh yeah. my God! This event is so fun. Isn't it it amazing? really is just really amazing. It really is amazing. And um, people here are great, and the food's pretty good. All right, I'm a snob, but yeah, uh, you know, hey, yeah, but me they too. but they do pretty good. And we grow our own food. We become food. Snobs, oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's what it is. But no, but no, and the, but meeting people and um. And hanging out with people and then the mind, you know, there's so many new people have spent like a decade studying this mm -hmm. and figuring that out. And you'd never heard of it before. Like yeah. <laughs> there's so much of that going on. Yes. 
It's amazing. It is. It is amazing. And uh, the thing uh, that I really like is that there is a different level of open mindedness at an anarchist conference. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Because an anarchism is already um, a challenging issue and, and, and it, it could be a, a divisive issue to people, but it's mostly a liberating thing for the, the idea of that. And people people are generally fairly liberated here. Well, I and you, I, I appreciate what you're saying, and it's like so much. We like I've heard, you've heard, we've seen so much and heard so much that now, you know, we, when something new comes to us, we're like, okay, maybe, maybe not, you know. But there's a there's a a willingness to for open minded skepticism, and I think that's a very good characteristic of it a lot. Is. And it's also it's also um, let's make challenging conversations, right? Let's yeah. let's let's push the boundaries of things. Yeah. So yeah. It's actually also extremely uplifting because the message is very, very positive. Very and, positive. You know, and honestly, the the simple thing is, is we're at war. Like there are many, many layers to this war, but we're at war. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of solutions here. And then the other thing is, is just there's a lot of people talking about some of them. Adversity. I know it flops down. Just put it higher up and expect it that it's so keep going. Yeah. Okay. So can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. Can is you she, is she coming here? out good, guys? Yeah. Give us a thumbs up. Her levels match to mine, so she should be fairly good. Um, do do do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think we're good. Okay, I'm, yeah. seeing, I'm seeing the level, and it looks about the same as mine. So, well, anyway, there's been uh, a lot about our own history, which we don't know, uh, and then about what some of the uh, characteristics of some of the opponents that we have. You know, who and what are they, and and what abilities do they do and don't have? And then the other, we're starting to shift more in your stuff and my stuff of solution, you know, yes. so like backyard food production, farming, um, making biochar and doing all kinds of cool stuff yeah. like that. So let's, let's get into that a bit of like, what, what are you really into right now? I'm interested, like I, cause I know what you're teaching and showing people a fairly rudimentary stuff for a lot of people, but for a guy like me, what are you into right now? That's exciting you. That's You've beyond been doing the... this a long time. Yeah. What's exciting you right now? Okay. I yeah, will tell you. Space. I will tell you. I want to know. Yes. This is going to blow your mind. It's one of those other things that you never heard about. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, just to give everybody some background, like I teach people how to grow food in their backyard because backyard food production, as humble and as simple as it is, is going to be one of the most critical things in this war that we're in and deciding your future because the food supply is being targeted. Yep. You know that. Um, Anyway, so I teach, I always felt that it would, it was a critical thing. And now as I get older, I'm realizing how more critical it is than ever. So I teach people how to grow for half of their own food in their backyard, even if they have no experience or older, they're out of shape. And you're absolutely right. Like how many times have I taught people how to make compost or how to garden or, you know, all the stuff. So you're right. You know, I, I, I do. So I'll tell you the story of how I got into what I'm going to, uh, what, what's exciting me now. So Egypt and I might have the dates wrong. I think it was like the eighties. They had a they had a problem, an epidemic of um, hepatitis C, and um, they did the Egyptian government did something really really smart, which is kind of interesting. So they had this competition where they invited all these different medical modalities. So they had, you know, the pharmaceutical companies with their even with their best interferon and all their bigger drugs, and then they had homeopaths and they had acupuncturist and all kinds of healers of every stripe right mm -hmm. and they gave them they had like each healer group had 300 people so there's involved thousands of egyptians in this thing yeah and they went over a six month period in the beginning of course they do all the the baseline they do all the baseline tests you can try to tinker if you want while are you doing this we're doing yeah, live, live, yeah. live. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and they took the av setup so the can they took the camera no, you, uh, if you want to play with it, try it. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, so anyway, they had this six months and they do the benchmark and then they look at people six months later and they say, you know, who got better, who got worse, you know, like, like, let's fix this problem with hepatitis C. Yeah. And so they invited this architect to join into the thing. And his name was Dr. Ibrahim Kareem. And he said, um, I'll do it under one condition, and that is I don't know who my 300 are, and they don't know who I am, and there's no contact. There's only isolation. So they said, okay. So the whole the competition goes on, and they do the reveal of the winner of it on Egyptian national television, and it was Dr. Ibrahim Kareem, the architect, that won, and not by a little bit, by a long ways over um, 
every other healing modality that that was there and there was it was very thoroughly done and you say what did he do and it, well he made people a little pendant with some shapes scribbled on it and he said just wear that as much as you can during the day at night put it on your bedstand that's it just wear this pendant that has these shapes scribbled on it and his people want hands down um so of course and, you can, and have you tried this I, I do have one of the pens. Yeah. I'll actually get it in my backpack. So yeah, I'll get, yeah, yeah. get it out. But anyway, let me continue. So, of course, yeah, yeah. he upset every, every, he's completely let loose a hornet's nest on the medical community. Mm -hmm. He said, okay, well, then this is where I started to get intrigued. He says, well, let's do it where there could not possibly be any placebo or psychological because they were all saying, oh, you told people or whatever, you know, with some kind of psych. Well, even if it was psychological, like he won, like why yeah. not, you know, but they yeah. were, they're all mad at him. So he goes to a chicken farmer and they had CAFOs. Yes. Back then, you know, yeah, the oh, yeah. chicken farmer has 20 of these who 20 of these houses with 2000 birds. And, you know, the, you know, the you know, the formula. Yeah. Right. And Ibrahim goes, I want I want one of these one of these houses of chickens and let me do what I do. And the, and the, but do not, you know, I think he fed the the birds the same feed. But he said, do not do any antibiotics. Don't do any hormones. Oh, we got that. Thank don't, you. Nice. Thank, I, you. thank you. Thank you. So it's, don't do anything that you normally do like that. And the farmer said, well... Put it down a bit there, Jack. Speed back in a bit. Yeah, it's a little bit. The farmer said, well... Because you can hear that, right? Yeah. That's that's helping, right? That's good. That's good. I'll talk for luxury. Yeah. All right. So the farmer said, well, you're going to have to buy all those chickens right now. And Ibrahim said, why? And he said, because they're all going to die, right? Because there's a reason these farmers think they have to do antibiotics and hormones yeah, and all yeah. that stuff, right? Yeah. So Ibrahim comes back, whatever it is, what is it, three months later, or, you know, chicken production time. Yep. And the whole thing is empty. And he goes to the farm. So Ibrahim, by the way, said, I'll just buy them right now from you, right? So yep. he handles that. So he comes back, and they're all gone. And he says, goes to the farmer, he says, what, what happened to the chickens? And the farmer said, oh, well, first of all, when people heard that they were your chickens, I sold them for four times as much. <laughs> so I go, okay. And he said, the other thing is, and you know, in the poultry business, commercial poultry, like they keep track of this stuff. He said, yeah. uh, regulated. 15 percent less water. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. 15 percent less feed. Yeah. But they gained 12 percent more weight. And when they processed them, they said, normally these birds all have all kinds of cuts and scratches and everything all over them because they're in a confined housing operation, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He said, all of your bird skins were just beautiful. like per beautiful, almost immaculate, showing that they had lived a very, and I'm like, what did that man do to that chicken coop? And he just put up some colors and he put up some other things and some kind of shapes. So he's an architect. He's all about shape. And then he goes to um, an apple orchard in Switzerland and he takes a section, a corner of it, and that normally they spray, when, you know, apples, they spray everything on it, right? And he says, don't do any of that spray. And the, and the apples he produced were amazing. You know, they were bigger, they were sweeter, they had a longer shelf life. Um, you know, he did it, he just, re he grew a sweet potato in salt water, in uh, from water from the so Red Sea. What, what the hell? Exactly. That's insane. That's exactly. Like what? That's exactly what I said. Like what? WTF? You yeah. know, like what the hell is that? Technology? Yeah. So he's all about shape and he's an Egyptian and he's been very fascinated by Egyptian temple science and he's like tapping into technology that his four, 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 four father, you know, Egyptian temple science and he's marrying it with architecture and he's saying that shapes I don't know I honestly don't know like however he sees the world I want to figure that out so there's something going on here there's this, something this amazing is, this is, and uh, this is not just I mean all this stuff I've dug into it <laughs> so he's he's been at it for 50 years now it's called biogeometry and I love it and I it's that's so you asked me what's doing me and I did the uh, I did the um, the foundational and the advanced training, and honestly, I feel like I'm in engineering school starting over as a freshman again because it's wow. just they have a whole different understanding of space and of time and um, color and shape and angle and um, you know uh, a lot of the training I'm dealing with pendulums to work with subtle energies to learn to. What do you, what's your thoughts on electroculture? Have you I, tried it in the garden? I have not. I honestly kind of think it's a fad. I'll tell you something though. Okay. My friend. <laughs> we, I believe it's possible, but you know. Well, and I don't, you know, some, the more I learn, the more uh, I realize I don't know. Yeah. You know, the yeah, cliche yeah. as it goes, the older yeah. you get. 
Um, we put copper rods in our garden, mm -hmm. uh, in the kale patch in the greenhouse, mm -hmm. which I always pull my kale out by July because it just the aphid pressure comes in. My soil is not perfect, right? I'm 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 building it up. I'm working it, right? Yeah. Um, and so that's a problem every year. My wife made these beautiful little copper rods, and I made big ones and put them around my mm -hmm. property. Mm -hmm. But she put, and that's a whole other conversation, but she put the small ones in the garden and the, the kale and everything that was near the rods she put in didn't get any aphids in the summer, though aphids were in the greenhouse down the bed. It was almost like the aphids didn't like the frequency of the energy in wow. that area and didn't go there. Wow. That's at least my observation. How that works, I can't tell you. Yeah, right. I don't know. But look into uh, an electroculture is quite fascinating. I, I am, I mean, I am real interested in that. So some, I'm trying to duplicate some of what Abraham did uh -huh. and and learn the skills of it and figure out the knowledge. Yep. So the squash vine borer, you have squash vine borers, don't you? I know you do. Everybody, everybody uh, does. They're... Well, we don't. You know, in my climate, I don't get them. Oh, because but... it, it wipes them out and they're too cold. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But you guys in, in warmer climates. Oh my yeah. God, Puerto Rico. Yeah. So Puerto there's, Rico, um, I'm in, of course, different groups where we all study biogeometry and share ideas and stuff. And they were talking about what do you do about termites and insects? And uh, there is a like a way you can make a specific angle that harmonizes with the insects. So I took a picture of the squash vine borer and then I set up, did the process that I'm learning. And uh, I, I haven't had a problem with squash vine borers. You know, I'm on this trip. So let's see what happens. Wow. Yeah. Back, I but... mean, you know, when I come to an event like this, I mean, we saw, uh, I believe it was Mike's, I'm just going to look at the schedule. I think it was Mike's presentation on the trees, the giant trees. Yeah. Did you see this? I did, and I was overwhelmed. Holy shit. I, this like, was... That's a rabbit hole that you can spend a decade or two. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was, um, yeah, Mike Wilkinson, Titanic Trees, man. It was amazing. And, 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 and his title, is, 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 his talk was appropriately titled Mountains of Evidence. He just showed so many examples i i was shocked folks i'm talking about trees the the size of mountains uh what what mike was showing evidence for and he mike was here wasn't he he'll, he'll probably oh, oh there he is yeah uh come on unbelievable unbelievable uh evidence so maybe maybe mike will come on at some point too uh to over the, the course of the evening but so that's uh what, what what's your garden look like in puerto rico right now um I'm actually working. A, well, let's see. Yeah, I've got stuff. I've kind of got a yard that I'm renting. So yeah, um, but I'm planning. You're getting set up there, right? You just kind of. How long have you been there? Well, I've been there four years, but it's like oh. there's been this bizarre. I don't know what's up with the universe, but I've been moving. Like I think it's. I don't know. I I moved. I've been in almost every neighborhood in this little town now, and I know almost everybody, whether they speak English or That's not. That's Because, you know, yeah, I know. I kind of think that might be what was the universe had in mind for me. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, so now I'm in this yard and I'm doing the three system that I do. I've got rabbits. Yeah. And then I'm planting. I've got the garden all around the edge. And then trees, you almost grow trees like weeds. You, like like yeah like garden plants in in, in the, the tropics. tropics absolutely yeah and i, I, I i'm going to give a shout out to stephanie sison hey stephanie i finally met up with curtis he told me she said you got to meet curtis i heard he's we, gonna be there and i yeah i'll tell i'll interact for a second i ran into her uh i didn't i i don't i don't know i don't know i don't think i knew you were going to be here but i know i've known who marjorie wildcraft does of course because a lot of people on my YouTube channel, say, yo, Marjorie Wildcraft, you got to check her out because we're the small farm. I'm the, the small urban farming. She's the she's the the small the small the gardening. You know, we're the that's us. That's us. And we yeah. and we got together on the first morning, and we were just right into it. We were. And, we, uh, it was great. It's been great. We've yeah, been it's been, it's been so great. And um, damn, I lost the thread of where we were at. Oh, um, oh, so I'm doing the three part system, right? Okay, so the back the garden, food yeah, like, right, you know, right. so I show people how you can grow half of your own food in your backyard in less than an hour a day. It's actually less. Mm -hmm. So I got the rabbits going and I'm working on this particular lawn to develop all the food sources for the rabbits. So like comfrey, leucayena, you know, gondules, you know, there's all kinds of things that you can plant. So you have rabbit feed because yep. when the grocery stores close, the feed stores are going to close. So you need to figure that out. Yep. And I'm planting, I plant trees, but you plant trees like Stephanie. I was giving a shout out to Stephanie and Stephanie's like gives me these trees and, and so why well, I'm, I'm kind of stressing, you know, cause I'm normally thinking of temperate climate and you got to like design stuff and yeah. you're, you're going to put five years into that tree before it's going to produce. And you know, it's kind of a big decision, right? Yes. Over there, like you just plant whatever what? you want. If you don't like it, just chop it down. That's you just plant another one, you know, like, uh, right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Everything grows so fast. And you know, it it's, it's interesting too, cause it, the, 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 the type of, food production that exists in a place does influence the culture. And one thing I've observed in warmer climates is there's the whole idea of manana. 
Exactly. Right? Yeah. Because, hey, there's food coming from the trees all year round. There's fish in, in, the, river in the river all year round, in the ocean, all year round. All the stuff's available all year round. Whereas in Northern European, Western European culture, you had to you had to build a surplus for winter. Yeah. Right? So you had... And you had to protect that. And, and yeah. Yeah. And you, and you had to work your ass off in the summer to... Make it through the winter. Make it through the winter. Yeah. Right? You had to get all that to, to uh, production. Is that my phone? I, th that? I don't know. Who Tony, is that your phone? phone. How dare you? Uh, <laughs> But it is, you know, it's uh, it's the real deal. They don't have it down here. And so you can understand culturally the sort of a bit of laziness, if I can be, you know, politically incorrect and frank. You see that in most tropical cultures, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because you know, the winter's not coming, right? Whereas we have the story of Jiminy Cricket. Yeah. And, hey, and, and out there watching, if you want to come out to Puerto Rico, I've been helping a lot of people move out there. If you've been following Curtis, yeah, just look me up. Should I give him my phone number? I'll give you my phone number. Sure, you can call me or text me. Want to. Okay, ready? 737-230-4699. That's 737-230-4699. Yeah, come on out. I, I'll show you. Uh, show you. We get a lot. There's actually a really... Puerto Rico, you know, every area is going to have its pluses and its minuses, right? Yes. So just as we were talking about insects, in the tropics, we don't get a good freeze. So you don't wipe out your insects. Oh, yeah. And they're big. They're big. And the you get bugs are big. You get the bugs, big bugs, and, and the diseases don't go away. And they're, the they're soil-borne illnesses don't go away. You have to be more conscious of your soil in the tropics than you do in the boreal climates. Yeah, colder climate, I believe. Yeah, you don't get that natural reset. Right. right. Yeah. Which, which is an advantage. We got David Avocado Wolf in the house now. Everybody oh my God! Hey, come on! No, I was this on his. Good. I was you come on. in with us because we're, oh yeah, you were on my. Uh, I was on your Black Sheep Summit. summit. Yeah. Yes, but that's, we've that's, never that's, met in person. Here. So okay, so slide over. Where do you want me to go? Come right in here. Grab that chair. Yeah. Come right next to me, brother. When are you guys start? We're dude. We're rolling. We're, we're streaming. Rolling. It's happening. We're streaming. We're gonna get some food. Yeah, we're gonna get some food. Would you like some? Yeah, like the fruit. The anarchist yeah. garden, the the anarchist variety show is live <laughs> with David. Got a out of phone. I you, have. You've got the kick uh... things off. I got some local, uh, some local biology, and I'm okay. I, I'm doing a test on the spot. David Avocado Wolf here. What are these, my brother? Ooh, um, great question. Do you recognize that? This is a local thing that's around everywhere. It's got three lobed. Can you guys see them? They're unripe. They're unripe, aren't they? This is a medicine that you probably are familiar with. You might not grow it in Hawaii, though. Okay, wait, is that anything? See, where's his mic? Oh, there. There's uh -oh. his mic. Okay, you got me? Oh, yeah, Pastor. Oh, well, let's see. Bean. this is unripe, though. Yes, it's unripe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. unripe, and the beans are not developed. When, what what will happen is they'll turn brown, it'll split, and then there'll be that multicolored bean on the inside. But it's, Got uh, it. Awesome. It, it, <laughs> you know, so much of what you had to say today, David Avocados will talk. You want to turn that, that light off? On the phone? Yes. Was absolutely uh, fully charged. Okay, here we go. Let's fully charged. We got a video. Yeah, yeah. We're, okay. we're sliding in. Let's get this thing on. Maybe. There, there we go. go. Okay, there we are. Boom. Okay, nice. Um, it, the abundance is everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah, castor is an invasive species in Hawaii, and castor oil is one. I was just talking to a guy, so he he looked like he had gout. I mean, that was the situation. He's giving me his symptoms and his, his age-related symptoms, and I was like, that sounds like gout. And gout doesn't just necessarily show up as like, you know, your big toe explodes with uric acid. It can show up as arthritic symptoms all over your body. And one of the things I recommended to him was – to get into quercetin big time, 1,500 to 2,500 milligrams has outperformed allopurinol against gout for years. And people need to know that's also a number one and two step inhibitor of cancer and viral infections of cells and many other things, of course, than does, including being in a mood uplifter. Um, but the um, castor oil came up because a castor soak of his, um, he actually had a surgery on his toe and a castor soak of damaged tissue is really good. Castor oil, it's called a castor pack. Well, I was getting food poisoning couple weeks ago and my wife rubbed it all over my stomach and it was coming on i ate something that was bad you know if you get it it's it it, it go it, it, it rises and rises in your life getting to the point where i start fucking porcelain pillows right yep uh she rubbed castor oil all over my stomach jammed it in my belly button in four hours it was gone wait do you wait, know, you know wait, what's up wait. with that 
So crazy. Is, is that, is the, that... Pasteur is a, it's a magical substance. It just, it penetrates. It has like a DMSO type of quality. So it can penetrate into the tissue and soften the tissue. So when you have like, for example, uric acid crystals, that main thing about uric acid is it's very water insoluble, but castor somehow resolubilizes it. Wow. where DMSO won't work on that particular condition. Now, eventually you're going to have to use something that will work specifically right on the spot. And the thing that will work on that spot is actually carbon 60 spray right, right on the spot where the gout is. If somebody has that condition and that will stop the symptoms almost immediately. It's unbelievably powerful actually. Wow. But if you're lacking that, and before we knew about carbon 60 spray, I mean, you were pretty much you had to go with castor packs and you had to you use quercetin to make sure that you didn't precipitate more uric acid and gradually your body would start uptaking the uric acid and and getting it out of the way. That's, you, so that was just the you know, latest I conversation about beans, castor. Is I, would, I would grind up castor beans and use it in the garden to, uh, it's a deterrent for Thank gophers. Thanks, Kate. My wife texted me and just said, talk closer to your mic. <laughs> yeah. My, my wife's, uh, probably for all of us, I think she's telling me, but uh, yeah, I think yours is because I'm hearing us better. Yeah, yeah, yeah you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing good, you on the I'm speaker good. that well. So, yeah. dude, what has what's the experience been like for you? I don't know. It was we'll epic. Go. I mean, I'm you know I'm a public speaker. You know, I, people know me as a meme lord, but I've done three thousand public events. You know, I've I'm a I've been cranking for years. five five nights a week for fifteen years straight. It was hardcore. So I like public speaking. I'm, I'm a public speaker. So. Because of the scamdemic and all the other stuff that went on, I, you know, and I basically my outreach was in social media because that's really fun for me. I really enjoy social media that, you know, I eventually was like, oh, man, they're going to give me a spot on the stage. I'll go up there and speak. So it wasn't really part of why I came, actually. It was just a friend of mine just dragged me along. And then then they're like, oh, do you want a speaking spot? I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and Because I like public speaking. But it came off way beyond what I thought. I mean, it was a, it was an awesome day today. Incredible. Awesome. And great crew and great, great um, support staff. Everything was fantastic. Yeah. 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 I was lit up. You were lit, I was lit up. I, you know, I've been in, in a like a, you know, strong fasting state. Right. You know, I've been living on no real calories and just like, you know, these whatever this is, this is like a horchata or something like that. Yeah. And uh, this is probably the most caloric thing I've had all day. And dude, I, I'm feeling the same way. I haven't been eating. Not, not to your level. I haven't. I, I, after you today, honestly, you really inspired me to do fasting. To, to I'm, I'm, I'm telling I you like fast, but but this because I haven't been eating much and I'm fucking charged, dude. And the humidity, I feel like I'm detoxifying. I've been texting my wife about this and I feel it's amazing. Not eating is great. It's the <laughs> people are eating themselves to death. And it's very obvious when you stop eating, what happens? You're like, oh my God, everything goes better and better and better and better and better. Everything goes back to normal. It's absolutely amazing. So when you're young and you're being constructed, you need more nutrition. But once you get to a certain age, you don't need anything. I mean, it's you're this is the crazy discovery. And I discovered this from a guy who hadn't eaten in years. And then you go, no, that's impossible. When you're living with somebody like that, it crushes, like I said today, it crushes your belief system. It, it pulverizes your beliefs because our beliefs are all arbitrary they're completely arbitrary when somebody comes at me and they're like no 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 it's this or that i'm like oh god it's arbitrary everything's arbitrary and all we can do as nutritionists for example is get people directed down into a probability field that's the goal right so like for example one of the things i'm wired to do is to design diets for for whole civilizations it's just in my consciousness like i've studied this how does this civilization what's their berry that they use what's their main source of fat and protein what's their you know their main plants that they use why did they select those how come this other group that lives there selected different plants in a different system i'm wired for that stuff i do that stuff in my sleep dude the thing that i've been really impressed by you and Full disclosure, we've been bullshitting on two nights in a row. Really uh, good time, by the way. This guy's amazing. rad. I was, whoa, <laughs> Curtis Stone. <laughs> but this guy's a legit farmer. Like, he, he's not just David Avocado Wolf. He, this guy's, and, and the thing, you farmed in multiple climates. Yes. Which I really find fascinating because I love climates. I love temperate climates. I love the boreal climates, the arid climates, all of them. They're all unique in their own way. Yes. And you, this guy's got a property in Canada. He's farming in a boreal climate. You're on the tropics. Yeah, I've been in the tropics. I've also California and Texas. Dry climates. Yes. Right? And right? deserts. And to a large degree, I did farm a long time in Arizona, in Arizona, because we had a, we ran a hot springs there from 1999 to 2014. So 
you know, I've had that experience, which, you know, by the way, the presence of the yellow watermelon, the Zuni watermelon in Arizona is an anomaly right up the Rio Grande and the Zuni tribe and their relationship to ancient hieroglyphics and the Egyptians is there. There, There's a relationship. And if anybody knows about watermelon, it comes from Egypt. So the fact that the that the watermelon is there in Arizona is kind of indicative of the fact that the Egyptians sailed up the Rio Grande River, which they did. And they sailed up the Mississippi River and they sailed up all the great rivers of the world. In fact, the, the Egyptians had sailed all around the world and were proficient at a world's wide civilization. The evidence is there. The Steelies, you know, have you ever heard about that? No. There was 160 Steelies. This is still in the books in the 1860s, 1870s, 1880s. And then the Smithsonian grabbed them all and wiped it out and then erased it from history. But if you go back to the old books, there were Steelies. There were big rock out croppings along the Gulf Coast that would guide you into the Mississippi River Delta. And they were in Egyptian. They were in Egyptian hieroglyphics. And the uh, Smithsonian's like, oh, we're going to take that. But the old books talk about it. I mean, I do believe that I'm looking for this right now. Mark Twain even mentioned it. He huh. even mentioned it. This was a known thing. It was known that the Egyptians had circumnavigated the world in ancient times because their debris was still left over here in the in the new world. And uh, then they, you know, they want their, this thing, man, this, the, just the satanic Smithsonian, this Klaus Anal Schwab's, the bug eating creeps, the, the beam you know, the control here. freaks. These people are out of their friggin' gourd, and they are absolute control freaks. They're mentally deranged, they're perverted, and everything wrong with them you can imagine. And we, we cannot let them win. It must be united non-compliance. There we go. That that avocado wolf is kicking off this stream tonight. This is popping off, folks. Smash the like, share the stream, and uh what do you got to say to that, Marjorie? I, I totally Are you agree. Vibing on, on, I'm, I'm on totally, uh... I'm totally agreeing with it. And one of the keys is, is going to be growing your own food, because ten companies own and control basically own and control everything that probably you eat, not us, but and oh, of course, only a handful of people control those ten companies. So, and it's it's well known they're having a they're they're having a, what they produce is not even food in the first place. But it's interesting how it's gotten to that, how it's just degenerated. And I the, the real core of it all is usury, in my opinion. Absolutely. Right. Because, yeah. oh, we got to make more money. We got to cut corners. We got to cut corners because a usury system is a musical chair system. Right. Because you're always printing more money than is out there. And you're always asking for more money back than is out there. So the thing just keeps ballooning up and ballooning up and ballooning up. And eventually someone doesn't have a chair and they they fall on the ground. So. This usury system drives corporations to, oh, we got to cut a corner. We got to cut that corner. Let's use this chemical instead of that. It's driving the whole thing. So to me, you know, this idea that comes from the Bible, that the usury is the greatest crime, is right on the money. And through that usury, they get us to spend our lives paying for our own demise. Mm -hmm. And they get to profit the whole way. The day you're born, get that needle in that fucking baby's foot, right? Yeah. Get it in there. Get them pharmaceutical drugs their whole lives. GMO foods. Now we're spraying in the skies. Get them so disconnected from what is the natural God purpose mm -hmm. to create, right? That's they it. want you spending time on a useless pursuit. That's So this is the thing that I talked about today in my talk was that <laughs> the actual best thing for you is to be creating Yes. And our, our God, whatever our God is, is a creator. And we know that because the forces of evil are parasitic. They don't create. They tear down and they destroy. And that those are there for a reason, obviously. They're telling us, like, don't go this way or don't go that way. But some people get sucked into those strange attractors of escapism or materialism and they get pulled in. So the key idea is creating. Yes. And the whole system is designed to get to get you to stop creating. And by the way, I will say this. My meme page, like my Telegram meme page, to me, it's a work of art every day. I'm curious. It's like a work of art. I, and, I just and, heard about that today. I'm and, and it's a machine gun assault uh, of the meme of the meme war. It is. Sure. I, I it was the first thing I asked him because we never met in person. Uh, but I said, how the fuck do you make so many memes? And you told us today. I don't know if you want to tell. We got almost 400 people coming in the stream. How right do you make so many memes? It's a, you have to be that type of person where you're always in, like I'm in the meme war all day, every day. It's what in I'm designed trenches. for. I'm designed for it. I think about it nonstop. I'll get up in the middle of the night and I'll start memeing. It's it just, it, you have to be that type of person. There's no other way around that. But also you have to be somebody who actually like is in the right 
frame of consciousness like that's driving us forward we're we're not going to be pulled back into their fear and all the pain and death pain fire destruction crap that they're they're surrounding us with we're moving through that so we represent ultimately the new thing the new civilization we are the seeds of the next civilization you know when i look now at the egyptian civilization for example, I see, I was like, whoa, this was all over the place. This was like our civilization in a certain context, in a certain way. Right. And they were in the Americas. They were in South America. They, I'm sure that they, like, I've had Hawaiians, native Hawaiians tell me that they're descended from the Egyptians. I've had native Maoris say that they're part Egyptian, that for sure the world had been navigated by the Egyptians. And so when I look at this, I go, wow, what's going to happen to our civilization? And where's our civilization going? And then I could see that, you know, this is the crashing of this at some hundreds of years it's going to take, or maybe 20 years, or maybe even next week. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. But the seed of a new thing will come. And from that will arise a new a new society, will become new values, and that will blossom and grow. And so that that's kind of what I'm looking forward to is that new thing. I, that's what I was put on the earth to be part of that new thing. Dude, you know what I think is God Klaus Schwab is a useful idiot for the creator. These assholes, in a way, are unbeknownst to themselves doing God's work because look at the memes they're making for us. Right. Look, 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 look at the awakening, especially thinking about the guy, Klaus Schwab. He's such a character. He's such a he's the, the, the stereotypical James Bond villain. The first time I heard about it, I just bust out laughing. I was like, is this real? Is this real? Is this real? Right? <laughs> but I think he's being played. These guys think they're building this Tower of Babel, and they are, but they're not going to get there. They're not going to get there. It, it. Will, it will fail at some level. It's going to fail because it's unsustainable because parasitism eventually consumes the host. Yes. That's the fatal problem. You, and you, eventually the host either gets gets goes down with the parasite or wakes up, snaps out of it, goes, no. Now, we have many different hosts right now, which is like every state, every county in the world. And there will be certain states and certain counties that go, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing this. And eventually there will be an alliance of these forces against the new world order, so to yes, speak. Yes. So it, it can't succeed. But the, this dynamic that we're in is one of the reasons why you don't want to reincarnate back on Earth. OK, you don't, right. Well, you we're going somewhere new yeah. now. OK, mm -hmm. let's hear more. about. OK, that. so people who don't. So, again, people will come at me with reincarnation they never studied it they don't they've never read a single book on it you know years ago a, a friend of mine he was like talk somebody who came at him about something he's like you don't know what are you talking about what do you know and you know i looked at the whole situation i was like yeah this guy doesn't know what's he even talking about so people will blabber their mouth they've never done the research do the research read ian stevenson's books on reincarnation read read max tucker's books on reincarnation steiner read, read steiner read um dr brian weiss's books on reincarnation and then you'll find out the real hardcore scientific research done on reincarnation kids who have memories that they couldn't have had they could locate their previous life they knew how they died they the parents confirmed that that's how the kid died or whatever. And there's case study after case study after case study. And eventually Ian Stevenson and hit this case, he concluded, he's like, there's no other explanation for this other than this is a reincarnation. Now, once you're on that track, you go, oh, so once I check out of here, I'm going to be reincarnating to do it, to work through my karma, or maybe, you know, maybe you're a holy being and you're not going to be reincarnating anywhere, but I'm not reincarnating here. Like on this dude, like I was coming into some like old growth realm somewhere, you know, like Ewok villages. And they're like, hey, 50 percent off. Come over here. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I went over there. Fucking hell. <laughs> and a slightly different shift is one of the things. So, you know, we've talked a lot about, OK, so they, they're spraying the skies, right? The food is poison. The GMO stuff is poison. All the mind control stuff. Like I had no idea. And then, of course, the complete, like you're talking about the Egyptians and the complete, like we are a species with amnesia, like really hardcore, hardcore. And it's been so interesting, the different things that are coming. A forward. lot of people are talking about this conference, man. We've yeah. seen a lot of presentations even today. You know, it's just I love, giant trees. I love yeah, that stuff. But I love the giant tree stuff. I just love that. It just gets people to think differently. Now, Steiner had a thing about our epic or whenever the fall of Atlantis happened was it was 10,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, whatever your story is. Steiner said that this epic, so it started with the Vedic civilization, moved to the Persian, then the Egyptian Chaldean, then the Greco-Roman, then us. The next one will be the Russian, and then the next one will be the American. The seven epics of this epic, or the seven ages of this epic. 
this 6,000 year period or 10,000 year period or whatever your story is about how long an epic lasts. Anyway, he said that the main goal of this time is to actually develop original thought. And so I want to get into that a little bit. Like, okay. so this yeah, is where I want to go get into where I where I'm at on that on that story. Well, um, if I might interject, one other thing, and then we also had um, Max Lowen talking about she's a, a survivor of satanic ritual abuse and just talking about what it what they really do, and it has just struck me through all of this unbelievable oppression and control that has been going on for thousands of years. Like that there, we're still here now and that there are still, you know, a third of us that didn't fall for that whole um, COVID most, experience. Most people are good. Most people are and have good in their heart. They really can't good. understand it. That's the thing. That, that's how uh -huh. people don't wake They're up. They're innocent. It's, why would somebody do that? That's what my uh -huh. uncle said. My, my uncle lives perpetually in the leave it to beaver world. Right? Where it's all hey. <laughs> why would somebody, you know, say to me, Kurt, why would somebody do such a thing? It's like, dude. You can't get out of your head to understand that somebody else could think differently than you. Right. Yeah. yeah that's, and have a completely different upbringing than you. It's called government indoctrination camps, otherwise known as communist indoctrination camps, otherwise known as schools. Public school yes. system. Yeah. Public yeah. schools. But even through the public schools, everything that we have been through, there's still a bunch of us that are like, hey, we are creators. We're figuring things out. We're developing new technologies. You know, we're we're reconstructing our history. And it's I think that's where you're going to now is like the unbelievable. Well, I, I survived it all. All those. Pub, I went to yeah. public schools. I went yeah, to I them, all yeah. that stuff. I did. Yeah, and we still were able to think differently. Now that there's always going to be certain people who are born black sheep to the family. They just I never believed anything they ever told me ever. I just yeah. oh they want me to do this and regurgitate this. OK, I'll do that. That's how I did all school. I was I never believed any of it. Did it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's and I think that this group is a bunch of black sheep of their family, right? Yeah. No, everyone, oh, look at this history lesson and look at this thing happened. And it's like, oh God, really? But anyway, um, let's talk about independent thought. Let's go. I want to dig into the core of the New World Order's BS, the climate hoax crap and yes. all the just the New World Order BS. The core of it, you ready for this? Yep. Are you guys ready for this? This is deep. The core okay. of it, at the very freaking core of it, is that something can go extinct. That we could actually wreck this place, that we could cause something to be wiped out or that, oh, my God, every 15 seconds, this insect's going extinct or every day this has gone extinct. And I'm calling BS on that big time. I can give you example after example of example of, oh, this was extinct and then suddenly found again. Yeah, right. I can give you What's examples that? of animals, insects, trees. We could go down the list. Things were supposedly extinct and then suddenly they show up again now. How did I get on that track and where's my evidence? Well, eventually, as being a uh, conspiracy theorist, and I carry that proudly and an anti-vaxxer proudly, um, eventually a friend of mine, Alan Steinfeld from, New, from uh, New York City, we used to go to study conspiracy stuff about 20 years ago at his house in his apartment in New York. He said, have you ever heard of Charles Fort? And I said, no, I never heard of Charles Ford. He's like, get the book of the damned and read it. Well, I got the book of the damned. I got wild talents. I got low and I got new lands. I got those four books. It's a big compendium like that. And I'm a reader. I read it all. I keep reading it all. I keep going over and over. And I, again, one of the things that Charles Ford proved conclusively occurs was this. They did everything they could to hide this from your eyes. They have done everything possible to remove this so you don't ever see this. And that's called teleportations. So, for example, if you start looking at fish falls in recent history, for example, in Texarkana, March of 2021, I believe you can look it up. You'll see it. There's, there's I put videos out on a Twitter showing like, hey, look, this is actually happening. One size of a fish, a certain size, no other fish, no seaweed, no frogs, no anything else. Not a, a fish that big, not a fish that big, but just that size all opens up and falls from the sky during a storm. Yeah. How? I, uh -huh, how? <laughs> Here's how. So I, I've looked at that. I, I went all the way down the rabbit hole on fish falls and what it means, because what they tell you is like, well, a whirlwind picked up this fish from some lake over there or somewhere, even though we don't have that fish over there and we don't have the whirlwind over there. But somehow it, it picked it up, took it over here and then dropped it down in Texarkana, Texas or any number of places. And there's been about eight of them in the last two or three years eight of these things so eventually charles fort he, he started going what's going on here and he he deduced and discovered this that as soon as you're not looking like you're looking over there as soon as no eyes are on over here and this over here needs more fish or more frogs or more earthworms or more insects 
as soon as you look over there, it'll teleport in over here in a storm. It makes Meaning, what it needs. Uh, oh, are you ready for this? Because this thing that we're in right here is, has nothing to do with what we've been told at all. Nothing at all. So the earth produces what it needs, where it needs, when it needs it, and teleports it in. So eventually I started looking at the chemtrail phenomenon. And I started going, oh, look, what's this? What the chemtrail phenomenon is about is about stopping teleportations, interfering with dimensional doorways that open up and repair the earth where it needs it. Where it needs water, the water will come. Where it needs frogs, the frogs will come. Where it needs insects, the insects will come. Where it needs certain mammals, those mammals will come. See how crazy this is? But it, dude, it's observable in nature, though. Uh, in this, that, how the hell does all, this bug This is all thousands of cases. It's all proven. And, and this is a, what you said about the chemtrails. That's a new take. And I'm deep in the chemtrails. I got documents. I got it all. I've been on that one for a long time. But I can observe in nature that where things are needed, they're made. I see this on my land with medicine on the land. Elderberry, mullen, these things. That's these true. things present themselves to us. Mm. It, it's also abundant and it wants us to thrive. But this is Klaus Schwab and the boys. They want us to. To, to starve. The harmonic deception is trying to basically close off the ability for the earth organism itself to teleport what it needs in where it needs it. Now, I got I dug into Steiner's stuff on this for a long time to find out what he had to say about such things. And he said the biggest dimensional portals that occur are are meteoric. They're they're they're, they're meteorological. They have to do with weather events. You see how this all coming together? Now well, let's, let's keep together. going with it. Yeah, let's go. So the chemtrail phenomenon is an aramonic, you know, we're in an aramonic deception right now and everyone's bought into the materialism. You're in a material world. Everything's materialistic. But more and more people are starting to realize they're in some kind of a hologram or they're in some kind of a simulation. Right. 3D, uh, yeah, right? digital, yeah. A digital, yeah. And that, so it's not, things aren't complete. There's no way like you and I could meet and like, I bet you I got names, by the way, like Johnny Ranger. Do you know Johnny Ranger? In in Quebec, I know you know the same people as I know from so, that I, era. We, we I, I know from last night. I know. I know. The, the chances yeah. of us coming from like the same era, the same and spot, same time is, and, and, cannot be coincidental. No, I know. It has to be we'll synchronous. Explore this further. Yeah, yeah, because there, there, there definitely is. We, we, we crossed over in Montreal and at these times, absolutely. But I don't know at least off the top of my head. Johnny Ranger, but uh, I'm uh, with you, dude. I, I, I like where you're going on this tangent. So, so where I'm going with this is, this is that. That it's all ever that if you really dig into like oh my god uh, climate change or the, the climate whatever their whatever their fear porn is, at the very core of it is that something can go extinct, and what I'm saying is it cannot. That's what I'm saying. I'm putting that out on the table. I want you to think about that, and I want you to start looking at the evidence, and I want you to start going, yeah, what what are these teleportations, and why have they been hidden from us? Why do they try to? What's the word that normalize them or they try to dismiss them or try to get them away from your eyes? Because with that evidence, you start going, wait, what? Yep. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's Fort's whole thing. And this is a really to me, Charles Fort is a titan of philosophy. I've read all the philosophy books. I went through all Western thought. Charles Fort, Victor Schauberger, Rudolf Steiner. These people are the le Wilhelm Reich leaders in Western thought ever. And. By the way, you know, when it comes to women, women already know this stuff automatically. It's the men that are causing it, in my opinion, right? There's too mental, you know, it takes more. It's the, There's more that can go wrong with the male part of the organism. And there's a developmental problem. That's why we have the tranny apocalypse and all this other stuff going on, right? Because there's more that can go wrong in the male development. That's re, that's the reality of it. And so the, the developmental problems in males is what's causing all of this crap. Because women are like, yeah, it's like obvious. You're an idiot. It is obvious. And we are idiots. It is. And everything has been hidden from us. Yes. And so many of the talks here at Anarcho Poco are showing this stuff. The mountains of evidence we have with with all kinds of shit. It's uh, there, I said something today exciting. fast. I said something today really fast. And I just wanted to put and plant it in there. The banksters against the old growth forest. I love that one because that's, that's what it is. That's what it is. It if is. you strip it away, you're like, oh, it's the banksters against the old growth forest. The ultimate thing they're doing is they're just like, let's let's strip mine, cut that forest down, get rid of the old growth. We got to get rid of those trees, get rid of that. Why would they want to be doing that? Because they're going to put carbon sequestration plants in, in in the place of those trees, Dave. I mean, they're going to put know? solar panels on top yeah, of tree solar stumps? Panels and tre yeah, <laughs> okay. they do it better. The monoculture does it better. Don't you know, Klaus Schwab? All oh. these boys, they got a plan for us. Man. Anyway, so that that's where I came to in the in the journey of independent thought, man. You know, and like like, but also, but but also spending a lot of time in the forest. 
which you have done. There's so many There's amazing so things. much knowledge there. I mean, okay, so let's get into this one. Their original shopping center is the forest. Yeah. You need to you, like, you need to meditate. Forest. You, you have a great place to have sex with your wife. Forest. Um, you need you need soil. Forest. You need food. Forest. You need to go get mushrooms. Forest. Um, you need shade. Forest. I mean, it just goes on and on water. and on. You yeah. need water for the forest. Once the shade goes up, the spring water comes up. They take the trees away. The water goes we're running from the sun. It goes down. Big time. Trees, water up. Desert, water down. Uh, that's an epic analogy. You simplified it in such a way. You, you are a fucking meme lord, man. Yeah. Like, that, that's a meme. Have you made a meme for that one? I, 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 you know what? I, I can't keep up I with all the I did make memes. a meme. There was an Al Gore thing where he's like, it was some like, up, down. So it was years ago. It was a meme I made out of that video. I need to revive it for this particular context. But it was just one of those things that stayed with me. I was like, you know, this up and that down. It's so like the sun pushes the water into the earth. The moon pulls the water up out. But without a forest, there's too much heat and pressure pushing down. So the water's going to retreat in. Now, as soon as that forest goes up, the water comes up instantly right with it. So there's I've, I've spent years all my life, 27 years hunting wild springs all over the world on every continent except Antarctica, which isn't a continent. But whatever, um, whatever that is. Anyway, what I learned is, is that there's three types of springs. There's primary water springs. Yes. Here's a big Prime, one for you. Here, water. Here we go. Here's, here's, here's go. Stephen Rice. Oh. Okay, Stephen Reese. R e i s s. Good nice researcher. Stuff, guys. Here, here it comes. Yeah. The higher up you are, the higher in the mountain you are. This is a good one. Remember this. The higher up in the mountain you are, the thinner the crust. That's right. That's what I with my well. That's what I experienced. My yep. well is shallower. I'm 400 feet above all my neighbors. My well is shallower. shallower. At five times the GPM, God's water. See right how that into works? the fissure. See how that works? That's, he's in and, the fissure too. That's and, the primary water. And every guy I talked to, well driller I talked to, said they'd never hit a duster in their life because the basic basic idea is if you keep drilling, you'll get water. Water's everywhere. 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 And they want us to think it's water wars. Klaus Schwab wants you to think it's water wars, well, right? It's one they of the, cut down the, the forest. It's like the fear programs, problems. the scarcity programs, a big that's a big part of their programming, right? Okay. So the, everything's scarce and fear and all that stuff. The next, though, is the forest spring. So it's created by a wicking effect of the forest itself. So if the forest is wiped out, the water will treat into the ground. There'll be no spring water. As soon as you put the forest back in, it's a wicking effect. The, the shade allows the water to come up. Next thing you know, on the highest little point, there'll be a little rivulet oh, that'll come so out true. and it'll start Amazing. flowing down. Yeah. And so the, the water actually flows up underneath the stream to the top point, comes out at the, at the spring point, and then goes back down in a forest spring. It's not coming out because there's a crack in the crust like a normal mountain primary water spring. Then the third one is a seepage spring. I have direct experience, by the way, with all three of these, a lot of direct experience. A seepage spring is when the water is just saturated in the earth yep. and has to finally, after a while, they used to say in Germany, they'd say the mountains are peeing. But okay. eventually the mountains have to release it. And that usually happens after the rainy season. And so in the springtime, boom, the spring will start up and then it will dry out eventually oh, through yeah. the summer. I, we around, around our place, we got water popping out of the mountain everywhere. It's it's. It's amazing. And regarding homesteading, having multiple water sources is key. key. You want to have groundwater. You want to have spring water. You want to have rainwater catchment. You want everything. You can't have enough water, right? Great. Great. That's right. Great idea. I like it. All of it. Multiple sources, multiple storages, decentralized, right? The water I drink is from the earth, from the deep, the deep water well. The water I capture for fire suppression is from the snow melt, ah. right? In the riparian areas, in the in the watersheds, I just built two ponds. We got that uh, rainwater catchment. Why not? I, I, it's it's my last. It's my last. It's my least favorite rainwater, right? Because of what they're doing in the skies. But it's water that can be used for something. That's a great point. I never thought about it that way. But 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 the drinking, uh, the water from the earth is hard water, right? Well, what's, it, what, what's with that? What, what's your take on hard water? Because I find when I drink it, I'm like, oh my god, I'm I'm I, I'm so quenched. Water born of granite is the best in my experience. That's water right, yeah. born of granite is yeah. the best. Um, and that's not actually a hard water in that sense, in the sense of it's rich in calcium and, and iron, right? Which will well, cause sedimentation. Um, although it could be rich, it's not possible, sediment, but we get a white, we see film. a lot of white film. film. Right? Okay. So in that, if you're going to drink a lot of that water, I'd recommend putting it through like a gravity filter, like a, um, 
like a uh, a um like a Berkey or something. Not a Berkey's okay, but I would go through the one of those like layers like oh, this, okay. you yeah, know. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to think of what the name of those are called. But anyway, it's a gravity it's a gravity filter. Uh -huh. Yeah, they use sand and gravel. Yeah, and right. Charcoal yes, and exactly. Five gallon drums. So yeah. what? By the way, what are they using to filter your water? This is a very important point because people have all these things under their sink. Like, what's in there? It's sand and stones and charcoal. What the earth already and has. coconut husk. It's Earth. Yes, it's Earth. Okay, so what I ended up doing, I learned this from a guy in Toronto. He said that he had done lots of research on water impurities like bacteria and water. And as soon as you put a quartz under pressure with the other quartz, as soon as you ram crystals together and flow water through it, zero bacteria on the other side. So what I do is I take all those cartridges out from all those systems. You know, I collect those all, all those old systems. People throw them away. I'll say, I'll bring it over here. Well, and then I'll take all the cartridges out, jam them full of quartz crystal, and then get that in there tight so that there's pressure on it. Or I'll wrap copper around it really tight so there's pressure on it. So as the water's forced to go through that in the line, it'll purify the water. Now, that's really interesting because I've drank that kind of water for years. Huh. Years. I wonder if that's a piezoelectric effect. It is. You know, you squeeze that's it. Yeah. Sure. Huh. Yep. Wow. The piezoelectro effect. And then there's other things, too. You can always... I didn't know that that would kill bacteria, but I guess it would. I mean, it's a small electrical field, so hmm, interesting. That was this guy's research. Now, I put that to use for many years, and it's been it's fascinating. And by the way, what I've used is the local quartz. So, for example, my house is on spring water in Ontario, mm -hmm. and it's not a, it's a surface spring. It's not a well. Yeah. It's a real spring, and that has a whole spirit to it. There's nobody who can tell me that, like, there's no spirit to a spring water. They don't know. They're guessing because they're a materialist. When I drink from my spring, I immediately feel... Charged and purified. Yeah. When I drink that's what's trickling out of my spring, it's different than my well water. It's a different experience. Different experience. It is. and and Because and, and it's right. It's almost like God's Gatorade. It's just like, boom, charged. Charged. What, what did I just do? It was like a blessing or something. It was like something. It's different than just drinking. That is well true. water. What well water can come up. It's yeah. unright. Yeah. Right. It's not. It's not ready to come up. But spring water has come up naturally. And so we bring that into the house. And then we have, right, there was an old water system in, in the house originally. And I jam that full of crystals and all the local crystals, too, from the land. And that's such a cool thing because the water is forced to flow through that again. So it just kind of recharges it. We got all the Victor Schauberger spiral pipes. We've got the whole thing yeah. built into the line. And it comes into the house at about 14 parts per million roughly you know in, in tds but there is no scale we have no calcium or iron in our water which is just fantastic amazing that is, that is beautiful wow well, thank you for that i mean i i have i drink of course well water rainwater rainwater does taste really good i, I really like rainwater but spring water is i like spring water better yeah all okay, the all the people cool. on the big island of hawaii so i was just hey I, for new year's i went to cinderland which is kind of like the old lava fields of the say 10 years ago 15 years ago and they've people still on those lots even though it got mowed over by lava so they built a house on it and it's all rain catchment all their water comes from rain catchment and so a lot of those people have come up to me over the years and been like what do you think i should do with my water and i was like first of all you got to get into carbon filters carbon and alchemy is the toad it's in the earth and so the carbon will filter and draw off electrostatically not sponge wise but electrostatically draw off the impurities that are in the atmospheric water and flip the charge at least two carbon filters of what we found was necessary then at that point if you want to put salts in it which i recommend electrolytes slash sea salt it has electrolytes yes <laughs> and then and then spin it you're good amazing yeah. This is the uh, Anarcho Poco variety show, folks. <laughs> we are crushing. Smash that like. Share the Curtis Stone over here, everybody. Yeah, this guy, man, David Avocado Wolf. David Avocado Wolf. We've got Audrey, other. How you doing over there? Here. I'm doing good. I want to bring in two. You need to I'm go and find the I right think, way to do that. I'm going to hop off here. So why don't we bring somebody else in? Okay, okay. We're going to rotate. David Weiss. Yeah, we're going to rotate him around. Him we got the is variety David show here. He's talking to Andrew Kaufman. Oh, why don't let's get both both of those guys. Get over here, you guys. Yeah, we, got two, we, got, we do we have another mic. mics over here. So we got two mics for you. David so, Weiss, Andrew, Andrew Kaufman, come on in. Every tell everybody uh where they get your stuff before oh, we see you all. Go to backyard, you. backyardfoodproduction.com. Backyardfoodproduction.com. We'll help you get through the apocalypse. It's all good. You'll have dinner. <laughs> Unless you're living with David, and then you're going to be on a fast. <laughs> we're, we're, tonight it's going to be Mumbai and all the other great Amazonian herbs. That, that's another way. That's really what I'm doing is I'm basically like just taking herbs uh -huh. and herbal tea and that kind of stuff. Oh, I, mean, I, I get it. I love this, fasting. In this mode, if I'm in a water fast, it's just water, sea salt, charcoal, maybe a little bit of lemon. But in this mode, being at an event, because there's so much great medicine flowing around, mm -hmm. I'm on the herbalism. So that was a big thing today that I wanted to get in for everybody. It's like, 
if you're not if the if your cells aren't filled with the alkaloids of your environment, you don't have the defenses against your environment. I don't know how else easy to say that. I mean, what they did, they took a little white pill. Thanks, Marjorie. They took a little white pill and said, hey, you know, get rid of your herbs. You don't need that. And take this little white pill instead. That's what that was the whole pharma um, wreckage. It's a wreckage. So. Yeah. How you doing there? OK, anyway, so let me say that again. If you don't have the herbs from or the herbs, I know there's some people from the UK listening in. If you don't have the herbs from your environment or the super herbs from your environment, you're, you don't have the alkaloids to defend yourself. And therefore, you're susceptible to colds, flus, fevers, sore throats, etc. So it, with the alkaloids from your environment, herbs as your diet in your diet all the time, then you are immune. You develop immunity to the environment. And I just can't say that enough because my role for years was traveling around and doing five events a week. So I couldn't show up with a sore throat, cough, cold, fever, flu ever. Right. That's how I got into the medicinal mushrooms and the tonic herbs. By the way, there's some herbs are more powerful than others or herbs, or we call them super herbs. And uh, those would be things like medicinal mushrooms, gynostemma, the great Chinese herbs, tulsi, shilajit. What about tobacco? And I think the tobacco is the king of all herbs. And some of these guys. So we're tobacco's seeing, king of all herbs. And so we've it's got the king. Dr. Andrew Kaufman here in the house, folks. We've got Dave Weiss, a.k.a. Flat Earth Dave. That might trigger some folks in the stream. If it does, smash the like and share this and tell people <laughs> how much... Uh, how how bad we're grifting or whatever you want to uh, smash us with? How you guys doing? Doing great, Curtis. Okay, good. you got to. He lost. All... He needs some additional so, mushrooms. So he lost his voice. Just so you guys, and he did. Yeah, and, I got. We're, we're going to get him sorted out right now. We we we. Th this is the thing at these these events is everybody is just so jacked on everybody's energy that we you just you just fucking talk all night, and that's yeah. uh, I think what happened to uh to Doctor Kaufman here. Yes, definitely too much talking. Uh, Here but comes Ivermectin. It, it's so hard no. to resist. Now you better keep that poison away from me. No. Oh, not keep that poison. We, away we might from have us. a debate about ivermectin. We have a disagreement. Ivermectin okay. is, this is, a, is a, a neurological toxin that has no therapeutic benefit for respiratory oh ailments. I'm going to take issue with that because I got a guy shitting out worms for four months on it. That's evidence. That's that real evidence. To, what does that have to do with what I said about a respiratory ailment? I thought you said it's a toxin. It is. Okay. So it's intoxicating his parasites. No, I'm talking about like it causes uh, ataxia, delirium. They're in Oregon, for example, in a six-month period uh, when people started using it for COVID prophylaxis, there were several hospitalizations and six admissions to the intensive care unit for people who were just taking it prophylactically and had no health problems. I personally had a, uh, a client who developed severe neurologic toxicity from this and it took her a full week to recover with a proper detox protocol you sure it wasn't from the binders the magnesium stearate the chemicals the big pharma additives and is flow in, agents uh, over-the-counter supplements uh very commonly and people don't get uh admissions to the icu for neurotoxicity uh, from those supplements i think it's pretty well documented uh there's several toxicology studies you could refer to in the literature and there's Many studies uh, trying to assess the clinical effect for, you know, alleged COVID, which isn't a real illness, but it represents people hospitalized with respiratory uh, disease. And there was no statistically significant or clinically meaningful benefit in any of those trials. I've got the list here, actually, somewhere on my phone of the actual studies, how many had been done and the numbers statistically. And it's not correlating with what you're saying. Now, I have given ivermectin to many people and recommended it to many people to great effect, including myself. And I've taken it for years personally. And I will tell you this, that it's a symbiotic. So it's an extract of a friendly bacteria it consists of eight avermectins. So ivermectin is not one thing. It's eight avermectins, which are excretions of a friendly bacteria. It's like acidophilin is what you want, not acidophilus. It's what like bifidin is what you want, not bifidin, bifidus. It's the extracts of the friendly bacteria that nourish you. And now I know that because those symbiotics I used to take for, for to if I was starting to get a cough, cold, fever, flu, I would take those and it would immediately be wiped out within an hour. It was a little pack you get from Japan. There was a called Syn something, S-Y-N, look it up, S-Y-N-B-I-O-T-I-C, symbiotic. And 
it would stop all symptoms immediately. How do you explain that? Well, I don't think you can really draw any conclusions from a sample of N equals one, but um, there's no therapeutics that I know that have instantaneous uh, effects. So it sounds like a placebo response to me. Okay. Well, I'm, I take issue with that because this is 800 years of research in Japan, Korea, and China. They're called symbiotics. Look it up. It's a class of substances. And I got aware of those substances because I don't want to show up with a flu, fever, cold, or cough. And when I get to an event, I want to be on my best game. Can I, can I, I want to add something because we could debate ivermectin, mm -hmm. but I think we could also find some pretty wicked common ground. Okay. Well, we got Dave Weiss here. <laughs> okay. And I know you and you. Ah, here we go. The question. The thing. The thing. The thing. The thing. What's that, the thing. The thing. The flat earth thing. Yeah. So we, we question what, what everything is, right? We were talking about it earlier. We're like, so there's so much bullshit out there. there so Dave, give us the spiel, dude. So I so I got I, we've been talking flat about, smack us. Somebody so, said Dave's gonna flat smack so us. So four four years ago, uh, Jaron from Jaronism and I were talking to Jeff Berwick about coming, or maybe three years ago, about coming to Anarchapoco to talk about flat earth. And Jeff said, I don't think people are ready for it yet. And I could kind of understand that because it would kind of it people shut down. And um this year they said, Yeah, come, let's do it. And uh, I asked my the audience today, I had, I had a pretty big turnout. I said, how many of you believe we live on a ball? And two people raised their hand. One of them was Alex Zek. <laughs> Alex Zek, how dare you? How dare you yeah. have an opinion? So that was a joke. There's only one person. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's it's interesting. Also, you know, there was um, a couple, um, like less than a handful um, of people that are diehard anti-flat earthers, like the Larkin Rose and... And um, some other woman, and they refused to come to my talk. And all I said is, "Come to my talk, and then let's talk about it." And uh, it's just so interesting how some people will not face their demons. Nobody wants to having their ball taken away. It must be some childhood trauma or something. Doctor Kaufman, what is your position? Why on matter on such matters? Well, I think um, you know everything is open to skepticism and questioning, and I think we know as we investigate different subjects that most of the um, paradigms that we are exposed to or explanations for how our world is are incorrect. And I want to draw actually some parallels between uh, the world of, of biology and the flat Earth because there are some of the same. Uh, logic errors or errors in reasoning that apply to both. And one of them, which is very important, is uh, is geometry. So, for example, when you look at cells and tissues under a microscope, you see two-dimensional cross-sections. And when you take a three-dimensional object, right, which um, a cell and all of the structures inside the cell, for example, are, as well as the membranes, and you slice it, you get a combination of different um, angle type slices, right? You can get slit straight slices that are horizontal, that are vertical, and then you get oblique slices in different planes that should give you a variety of different shapes of a three-dimensional image. And from those different cross sections, you can then reconstruct the three-dimensional appearance. But um, what's going on in modern um theory of the cell or the accepted version of the cell that some of these aspects don't actually show the different variations that they should have in different sections. And one really important one of this is actually the cell membrane, or it's referred to as the unit membrane. And it's said to have um, two layers, but there, these lines are always parallel in electron micrograph slides, which means that they couldn't actually be two layers because in, if they were oblique sections, they would have different distances, but they always have the same distance in all the membranes in a slide, right? So what we're told, for example, about the membranes being two layers can't possibly be true based on the geometry. And if we look at uh, for example, the geometry of the surface of a globe, we can do experiments where we can test, you know, is uh, that surface representative of the characteristics of that sphere, right, which has a known uh, rate of curvature, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it's important to actually look at these 
basic observations and and start there and see do they support the mainstream view that we're told curtis i have a i have a question for you dave come um, in so the coordinate system on a flat earth on, on earth not a flat earth just on earth is a longitude and latitude x and y right where the hell is the z-axis Right. When I, I talk to my my talk today, pilots are like, right, they're 100 miles from an airport. They have to angle. They have to figure out their angle of descent, which means how per mile, how much do they have to drop to hit the runway. But they do not calculate in curvature at 100 miles away. The, the runway will be over a mile below where they are if they go by that calculation and they go by a flat earth calculation. They're not using a Z axis. What Good are you point. saying to that, David? We almost got 500 people in the stream, folks. Smash that like, share that link. Let's get it to a thousand tonight. We've got legends coming in and we got more coming too. I trust my observations. And so if I test something like, for example, up Kuomo'o Road on Kauai, you can see Oahu at night. Yes, absolutely. And you can see all of it and the ocean behind it. Yes, that's the key right there. The, the mountain range on the backside of Oahu is 90 miles away from your eye. There's no way you can't. It's an, an unexplainable thing you're seeing compared if you're going to believe in that you're on a curved surface then you have to believe that the ocean is curved and then you have to believe that the ocean should be bulging up between you and oahu if you're on Kauai, and that means that you should only be able to see the tippy tops of the first mountain range not the second mountain range but dave sometimes you can only see the tippy top yep and that's because of atmospheric and water can unless you zoom in well no sometimes sometimes there's stuff blocking which is i call it atmospheric blocking or if you're down low, um, a small wave, a two foot wave can block out an entire city skyline. And you won't notice that two foot wave because it looks like it's your horizon. Even a mountain in the distance, you can't see the mountain. Let's city. talk about the horizon in general. The, yeah. the horizon is an artifact of your eye. The horizontal eye the zone? The horizon doesn't exist out there. The, our, the horizon is created by your eye. Let's right. go down that rabbit on a, hole. On a, on a ball, there would be a physical horizon at a known distance, as Andy was saying. And uh, that distance isn't there. We we are constantly blowing beyond it. I showed an example of some mountaintops that were viewed 700 miles away. And from the elevation that they were uh, viewed at, the tops of those mountains should be 40 miles below the curve. But they're all there. They're all there. And as I said, um, mainstream won't even acknowledge their existence, let alone deny it because they can't. Right. So, well, let's get back to the whole horizon idea in general. Yeah. It's an artifact of your eye. It's a focal point. Yeah. It's created by your eye. Yeah. That's a really important point. I read that in one of these great books that was written. It was the, geez, what was the name of that one? The Skylight Areas that was written in the 50s. Kind of a flat earth book. Interesting hardcover book that I got years ago. And he, that, he said that the horizon is an artifact of your eye. And I was like, whoa, there's, a, there's the truth right there. Is the horizon actually something that's out there? Yes or no? No, it's, no. It's it, it, it's when it it's just it, yeah. It's just it's, it's just a, your position and perspective. It's right. a parent position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that the horizon changes if you change your eye, like with a telescope, right? Is that not the yes. foundational idea of observation in general? The more you look, the more you see. Yeah. The more right. you pay attention, right? But what I love about the flat Earth more than anything is it's right in front of your face. It always has been. That to me is just an crushing logic. It's just right there. There it is in front of you all your life. That to me was just the most magical thing. I was like, whoa, it's always been right there. And proof that you can de be deceived. And that's another thing that was beautiful about it. It's like, oh, we can have been deceived. We were wrong. Whoa, that's an amazing revelation. And, and what difference does it make? I still have to go to work on Monday, which we were all programmed to say. Um, it makes all the difference of the world, all the lies of this world, from you know child trafficking to the COVIDs to to everything else, it's all based on the foundation of the globe lie. It makes you weak. It makes you distant from the creator. It makes you lost. It makes you scared. It it, it, it makes you have scarcity. Um, and, and it shortens your thought. I mean, your thought is stuck in that globe prison, right? If you know that, you know, that there's more across this plane, virtual, you know, whatever you want to call it, a simulation, I call it a physical simulation because I don't have any better words for it. And, um, when when you expand your mind like that, your thoughts go farther. And we all know, everyone listening here knows that your thoughts create your reality. And so if your thoughts are limited, your life is limited. So what difference does it make? I don't want a limited life. I want to live to my full potential. Full potential. What, Dr. Kaufman, what's your take on this? About living to your full potential? Well, about, about, about where we're kind of going with these limitations that have been created for us 
and I, for the record, for the thing for flat earth, for me, I kind of agree in the macro of it. I don't try to get into the details of what it is, but that there are so many foundational lies. Would you agree with Dave in that if you can get your head around the flat earth thing, it is the key to understanding that there are so many lies that are stacked on, on everything? Well, you know, I think there are many different pathways to the understanding of all these foundational lies. And obviously, cosmology is quite foundational, um, as is nature, right? Just understanding nature in general. And there are, you know, so many um, misperceptions, uh, lies, or just incorrect, um, you know, theories and laws. And the the importance of it is that we, we can't actually um, become mature. We can't make the right decisions, right? We can't take the right action unless we know the correct information, yeah. right? Because maybe we'll be thinking we are, uh, but uh, it'll be based on bad input. Yeah. Yeah, because it can, it can. I, I found this too, though, with the rabbit hole stuff, David. You know, you you could be down the rabbit hole. We've all been down the rabbit hole. Uh, at the same token, um, it can work against us too. In that, the, in my opinion, the New World Order wants you chasing rabbit holes. They want you pursuing nothing. They want you celebrating pride because celebration of pride, well, it's a sin for one, but it's also a celebration of nothing. Because to cel celebrate your gender or your biological sex, that you didn't do anything for that. You just showed up, right? So celebrate nothing. And so they want you doing the same thing is obsessing over things that don't go anywhere. And I'm not, I'm not challenging you on anything, uh, Dave. I'm just kind of providing a bit more context in that by, by the pursuit of these things, even us truthers can get, get stuck in rabbit holes that don't take us anywhere. Right. Like what, what, what would you say? Um, Wait, I, I've got something go to ahead, say Edward, this yeah. because, you know, I've, I've witnessed this many, many times that, you know, and I think it's important to separate kind of two sides of the story because one side is is realizing that that something, a narrative is false. Now, separate from that is, OK, well, what is the true explanation or what is the true phenomenon? And this is where we can easily go astray because we can end up using the same kind of errors in logic and believe um, a new theory or a new narrative that is has you know, no more truth in it than the mainstream one. And, but we, we believe it does because it, maybe it contradicts the mainstream narrative or maybe other people are saying it and, and uh, you know, we have solidarity with them. So we have to apply really the same rigor. And a big part of that is accepting that we're not going to be able to know the truth about many of these things. Well, and, don't, yeah. don't you think that part of not knowing is understanding that everything's a probability Right. Like, for example, ivermectin. Some people it's not going to work. Some people it will. Rishi mushrooms. Some people are allergic to mushrooms. They can't do that. Some people have problems with certain foods. Certain, right. The one size fits all can never work. It's a probability field. Yes. Rudolf Steiner said this. He said that there are as many diets on Earth as there are human beings on Earth. That's the real truth, by the way, of diet. Because it's so individual to the to the being. So the, everything exists in a probability field. Right. Hmm. And see, this gets to the whole thing about the, the azimuthal equidistant projection map. It's not correct. At the outer edges can't be correct because I've had people fly that route from Auckland, New Zealand to Santiago, Chile. And yes, it is a different plane, but it takes 14 and a half hours. And I got that from every single one of them that did that so, flight because it goes so fast. Right. So okay. we found we found uh, NASA documents showing that. OK, but the hold on the, on the azimuthal equidistant projection, you really are stretching that whatever the southern supposed southern hemisphere I, or area b below the equator. I think that it's a combination between the globe and that map. I think it's somewhere in between. So, so it's a hyperdimensional object is what you're saying. The Earth. It's possible. OK, see, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. See, what's happening here is that eventually you find this is the Charles Fort realization that eventually you find evidence that contradicts your opinion. And so eventually you have to accept a quasi reality, well, which means that logic oh and illogic exist together and rational and irrational not only exist together, they define each other. Th this is uh, well, you know, know, more shades of gray. In, 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 in a summit, mushroom, it's the greatest mushroom ever. It's been the most well studied herb in the history of the world. But it, there are people who cannot take it. They'll have an anaphylactic shock reaction to it hmm. because everything exists in a probability field. Does that make sense? I, I think that the the Gleason's map um, is the closest map that we have to reality because sure, I'm, it's I'm closer. My, I'm I my app, but I've done this. 
where wherever the sun is on my app, it's noon there. And so it was over um, the east side of Australia. I called my friend PK and I said, where's the sun and what time is it? He goes, well, it's noon and it's right over my head. And, and then later, you know, in the year, it's over Miami. I'll call somebody there. So it is moving and it is over these places. I, what, don't, I don't know how, how you know, how okay, far let, off Can I ask be. you guys something? What about uh, some of the critics that, um, and I, I try to not get into it because I, I just want to grow food. And so, but I'm open to all this stuff, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but what about the sprint, like the seasons on the flat earth map? What's the deal with the seasons? How does that work? It's so easy, man. The tell, sun's, tell me the sun's closer. It's warmer. It's so, closer. It, so it's, it's coming closer. No, and, no, and... It, it moves in between the tropics. You have the outer tropic of Capricorn. You have the inner tropic of cancer and the equators halfway in between those. So in March and September, it's over the equator. And everything in the tropics it stays warm because the sun never gets far from it. So in June, it goes all the way into the Tropic of Cancer. And that's why it's warm in the United States um, because it's clo it's getting close to us. And then it starts moving out and it gets farther away and it gets lower in the sky. Is it getting lower in the sky or is it just getting farther away? Let's get into the anomaly well, it part of it. It does get lower in the sky. Because right? it's farther away. Let, let's get into the anomaly part lights. of it. Oh, well, that, we'll get into that. But if you're under a street light, that's your summer sun. You're on the equator, whatever. Okay. And then the street light down the road, it's the same height, but it's lower in the sky. Right. Because, well, like, I mean, for, for me in the northern away. hemisphere, I really, you know, I do observe yeah. that the sun significantly goes lower because at the horizon. Because it's farther away. Look at the street light down the road. It's the same height but it's lower in the sky. Let's say you and I were sitting outside. Um, you came to visit me in Connecticut in February. Stupid thing to do. It's freezing. We're sitting outside <laughs> 20 feet apart because we don't want to infect each other. And it's freezing. Our beers are freezing. And David Avocado Wolf shows up and he goes, you know, Curtis, you look really cold. And he's got a 20 foot high or 15 foot high, let's say, uh, heat lamp. And he holds it right over your head, 15 feet in the air. You're like, ah, you take off your jacket. You're warm. Your beer melts. And I go, Curtis, where is that that heat lamp, that sun? And you go, it's right up above me. And I look at it, I go, oh, it's really over there. It's at a 45 degree angle, but it's still 15 feet above me. Then David's feeling bad for me. He walks over to me and I watch that thing get higher and higher and higher as he keeps it as 15 feet. And now it's over me. I'm warm. You're cold. It never changed its height. You saw it go up. I saw it go down. It's so simple. The sun gets near you and it's warm. Let's, okay, wait, 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 okay, okay, what do you got to say? Well, I just want to say, you know, this this is an example of what I was just mentioning, right? Because so, Dave, I think you've done a very good job, right? Proving that the ball earth model is not the correct model, right? And that's so, the most important part. And now you're using, right, a, a, another theoretical yeah, model yeah, to explain the seasons. But there are you could come up with an infinite number of other models that could also explain the seasons right so we're now i don't believe that everything is a probability i believe that the seasons work a specific way and they change on a regular schedule um and it's it is a certainty but what is the model that's producing it right so to prove your model dave you need to really go up above those light bodies and show them going in those patterns right Right. And then that would that would give you some direct well, observation. There, there are evidence of that. We right? have a lot of direct observations. We had um, flat earthers and many people go to the north way up um, in Norway and Alaska. And we can see the sun circling because it never gets farther away from. I, I'm going to I'm going to contest that because I videoed the sun in the north uh, in Iceland. And, and I, I, I and I did a, a an actual trip to Iceland. I've noticed this for years. And so I wanted to film it. And we did film actually one good corner of it. I don't believe that the earth that the sun circles above us. I believe it hits rhomboids in the four cardinal directions, mm -hmm. meaning it's a rhomboid with the corners in the four cardinal directions. But the point is that you didn't lose sight of the sun because it never got too far away from. Right. You. So whether it's a circle or a square, it's hitting gates. I'm with you. Something that's, that's like that's idea. going on. But it's staying okay. close to you. That's why it stays a well, well, Can't we just launch a fleet of drones and follow it around and that's map, a, map out the path? Yeah, yeah. That's so, so the that's job, that needs, that's a very good question. Is And the <laughs> job that needs to be done is you actually have to follow the sun and keep the sun in the middle of the reticle of the camera and follow it. And so the camera is not, the yeah. sun's position is not being disturbed by the curvature of the lens. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So you have to keep the sun in the middle and then get a big enough picture so you can take all of the background, like mountains or whatever, ocean, and p match it in. Now, when you do that in a short level, you see, and you sh showed this today actually on the screen, the sun moves in a straight line. 
Oh, well, that's because we're only seeing a small section. Well, oh, oh, it is. I, 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 I don't know that. Well, I'm not convinced of that. I'm I'm pretty convinced. And this, this is my own personal observation that when we see when I see the sunrise over the water, I think it's less than 65 miles away. Because I, I literally I see it like right where Montauk is, and I'm in I'm in the lower end of Connecticut. And then that means it's only traveling 130 miles over the course of a day. From my point of view, I see it on my personal atmospheric dome. And but you're you're doing this, but you just talked to us about how it's always well, this. You see yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? But, but if you're standing under a street light, the one a half a mile down the road and a half a mile that way, those are on the horizon. So they're doing the same thing. The sun doesn't do a dome. I see what you're saying. Now. I get that. I had a hard time. It does a pyramid over here. That, that, oh, oh, there it is. Okay, now we're getting but, but into it. That's a straight line. That's it's a straight, straight line. line. You could view it so it moves at a, at a point to the south, and then it moves in a straight line away from from you until it sets that's my observation uh, now now it's close to a straight line now yeah. it could be i don't know we have to me we have to do what i said we have to get the camera on the reticle of the the sun on the reticle of the sun or the camera on the reticle of the sun and then follow it and snap the pictures and then map that onto the background that it was moving across and see is it actually moving in a straight line because the curvature of the sun could just be the curvature of the lens uh, you know the i think you could correct that with a tilt shift lens okay what's a tilt shift that? lens it's kind of complicated, but it actually has a um, two um, planes of rotation and that the lens elements can be shifted with respect to each other. So you can have a rectilinear correction of those uh, kind of perspective artifacts. That's a good one. Okay. So we have another observation. I'm going to try We're to going full flat earth here. Where's we, Mike Winter? We can switch. get over here, Mike Winter. I, he's going to he's going to step in and it's going to be Alpha Vedic. I have, a, I, have a, I have a theory about castor oil. If you want there, to double back uh, to that, uh, Mike Winner is in the house. Curtis Stone is going to step out, take a piss, and uh, listen for a while. And he's going to come in here, jump in, okay. carry on, boys. Okay, hold on. So, Chill, going, dude. I've learned that cat that just recently this year, the wonders of castor oil just started coming out everywhere. And uh, David, you've confirmed that castor oil. Are you is saying you took castor oil and stuff started coming out everywhere? Or <laughs> I learned about it. And uh, all this information, and 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 you guys are in agreement that castor oil is a wonder oil. Would you say? Why would you describe it? I, I describe it as a yes. healing solvent. A healing solvent. So, thank you, bro. So we're all programmed um, by the mainstream, you know, with the tele tell live vision programming to, you know, certain things like Game of Thrones. The number one scene is that is when the little guy says, I want to piss off the edge of the earth from the ice wall. That way, when any flat earther mentions the ice wall, some people go, oh, like Game of Thrones, and they dismiss, fl dismiss flat earth. The little rascals, remember growing up with them? Two things they did. They they normalized orphanages. Orphanages, is that a word? And, um, and th that's after all of the orphan trains. And then they demonize castor oil everybody hates castor oil because of the freaking little rascal good point i would never even consider c castor oil because of that but then i heard maybe it was you talking about it and then amanda maybe and maybe even you and uh and i was like i was programmed and now it's the greatest thing ever That's funny. <laughs> mike winner how are you okay best get on ever. that mic mike mike get on the mic check check one two one two Can you there me? you go I learned about castor oil from the great uh, Mr. Casey, Edgar Casey. It was like, uh, of all the readings he did, I felt like that was his number one <laughs> um, thing he went to when he was doing his medical readings. It seemed like he went to castor oil all the time. And of course, with those readings, I think he was at like a 90% um, uh, convert positive conversion rate when he was doing his medical readings. So I got into castor oil a long time ago reading um and I could actually have used some last night. <laughs> yes. Mike wasn't feeling so well. Oh, Viva la Mexico. So how's everybody doing? What are we talking about? We've been getting into the flat earth. We were doing and we were talking about the while. sun and the way the sun moves, which the moon may move in the same way. It's just we have to get the sun filmed in the middle of the lens because the curvature of the lens could disturb our position of understanding where that sun actually is because there is a slight bend every lens is somewhat of a fisheye lens it's going to push something into a curved position that may not be in a curved position dave i have a, to its previous position i have another flat earth observation that we've been working on for over about a year that um, i'm not sure you've ever heard of and it's very very interesting so if the earth is a globe the the uh, the tropic of cancer and the tropic of um, Capricorn are the same length. 
So the sun circumference, circumference, same, same circumference. So on the flat earth, the Tropic of Cancer is much bigger. Right. And they're, therefore they're like concentric circles. Right? There, yeah, the concentric circles. So the bigger circle, the Tropic of Capricorn, the sun would have to go faster. How does that happen? People say, well, I don't know how it happens, but we can observe. Andy likes observations. We could observe um, the time it takes from sunset when the sun disappears to total darkness. Now, in our summer in the north, the summer, the 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 time after sunset, the light is longer in the summer. Like I get almost two hours of light after the sun sets in June. But in December, 15 minutes later, it's dark. It's pitch dark. So every latitude has a different amount of daylight, depending on the topography. So what, what you're driving at is the problem of there being no twilight on the South Island of New Zealand. No, that's, that's not what, what I'm driving, driving at. No, I'm no? not driving it at all. What I'm saying is, from June, there's no summer twilight on oh, the north on the South Island of, hold on. of New Zealand. From June to December, everywhere in the world, the time from your location, if you measure it from from sunset to darkness, wherever you are, and you measure it every day, it gets less and less and less for everybody, even people in the South. And then from the de from December to June, it gets longer for everybody. Well, it would have to be reciprocal on a ball. It would have to get. When from June to December, it would have to get shorter in the north and longer in the south. That would that would that's what a ball requires. But we're noticing that it's the same for everybody everywhere. And that's because the sun is speeding up. And that's why it goes away and it gets darker faster. So it's moving faster in the southern supposed southern hemisphere in the outer when it's making its outer circuit that I've measured that in Perth, Australia, how quickly the sun sets from when the bottom of the sun disc hits the, the horizon yep. until it sets like what's that time and then compare it like what, what do you see in la for example at a similar latitude in the 30s like 31 32 33 latitude or 33 31 32 I, 33 latitude north or south again it's just another observation that leans towards well, flat earth there, it, there's a preponderance of a couple of things on that earth. one is there is a notable absence of twilight in the summer in like the south island of new zealand which that is not explainable by a symmetrical object. Right. So that's part of it. It's running away so fast. So fast. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing that was an interesting observation is that the equi equinox idea is wrong. It's the equilux. It's the, the day of equal day and night is the actual change of the seasons. Like, for example, that this is interesting, too, because that, that day can never be later than March 19th in the northern hemisphere. So the Persians had that day, the March 19th, as New Ruse. It's the new year, always. So let's let's say in Reykjavik, the, the last day of winter can never be later than March 18th. The day, the day of equal day and night can never be later than March 18th. They knew that in ancient times. So they set that because I was always wondering, why is it March 19th? Why is it March 19th? It's not random. And by the way, Halloween, what's going on there? That day is swung out wildly on the Analema. It's the furthest to the east on the Analema. If you if you look at like mm -hmm. what day is the furthest to the east, it's Halloween. Good day for a second. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. So this analema thing, by the way, is in Lemniscate, right? It's a figure eight sign, mm -hmm. but it is not symmetrical. And so that led Steiner to the position, and this is what he says. He says, the earth follows the sun in Lemniscate. Whatever the earth is, it moves, it follows the sun. And he says, the reason why we show up on September 21st with more heat than, say, June 21st is because the earth is where the sun was on June 21st. Mike Winter, your thoughts on all this? Well, I like to think that we're in a wild simulation of our own thought creation and <laughs> <laughs> can't rule it out. So, um, but no, I, I think it's all fascinating. I think what's great is we're all figuring it out. Right. And um, that's what's been so cool was seeing what's going on here at Anarchapoco this year with all the talk about different cosmologies and different ideas of what the nature of reality is, is that people are finally realizing that that matters. Your cosmology matters. It defines who you are. It defines the reality that you live in, and it defines your um, your autonom you know, like what your autonomic uh, nervous system is going through, what your subconscious is going through. It's all based on your idea of what your reality is. So I think it's great that they're going. We're going deeper and deeper into these topics here at uh, like a quote unquote anarchy conference because this is uh, the core, uh, you know, philosophical and. Um, uh, metaphysical uh, discussions that the great 
you know, philosophers of the ancients would uh, would have. And we're, we're doing it again uh, with new media. So I think it's great, man. I'll, I'll be the first to say I don't know. I honestly don't know. I like Dave's. I like that model that Dave has on his app. It makes a lot of sense when I look at it. Um, but then there's always like funny little weird things that pop up. They're like, how does that work? So I'm always open to, to knowing how, you know, what other perspectives are. Um, but I do tend to go with this idea that we're in a thought created simulation and that actually uh, due to consensus of, of thinking, um, we can actually adjust and change nature. Uh, it's running on a program, but we as divine creators can actually adjust it and change it if we know our own law and we own our, know our own moral right, which most people don't. So most people fall prey to nature and are uh, commanded by it instead of us commanding it. <laughs> that was great. Okay. That's nice. I think, Good I job. Think, I think I'm getting over the stomach bug I had last night. Uh, I had Mike, a uh, curious, some, curious. So, some of these guys, uh, Dave and Mike Winter, uh, have uh, been feeling a little under the weather. And I, I told them about my castor oil remedy. I thought my wife packed it for me, but she did not. And no, no guilt tripping. I know my wife's watching right now from the snowy mountains of our <laughs> southern British Columbia homestead. But uh, power. she got it back on, dude. Nice. We we had 96 kilowatt hours of power today in the sun. She was in the greenhouse tanning. I was talking to my wife and kids on the phone on FaceTime, and they looked like they were in the tropics. Wow. And we felt, I felt, wow, I'm there with my family right now, but I'm here with you guys. And uh, this, is, this is gravy, guys. Keep going. Okay, Keep nice. Keep going. I will say if you want a great psychedelic experience, go into a deep Mexico fever like I did last night. And <laughs> I'll say, dude, I had the craziest time dilation last night. I'm, I don't know what it was, what caused it, but I was going through some deep, dark night of <laughs> psychedelic soul last night where I thought I was going through like three hours of intensive cleansing. And I would look at my watch and 10 minutes had gone by all night last night. I lived an entire life last night in my hotel room here. Jeez. I don't know what it was. And I was having these great epiphanies about the nature of reality related to my talk at this event and like where I can take this with. And I was like, oh, I got it. I, I should be writing this down, but I'm I'm too busy shaking in my bed. I'll remember it. I'll recall it all. Completely lost. And then it culminated at 6.08 a.m. with a boom. The shake, what they would call a tremor here. Just a little. And what, what did you feel that this morning? Woke me up. Well, all of a sudden I realized, whoa, I'm at the edge of this building. Oh my God, this thing's this thing's swinging like a domino about to tip over. It was wild. And they just call that a little tremor here, the locals. It was a 4.8 <laughs> or a 5.0 5. 5. earthquake. And, yeah. and and it was last yesterday. And and yeah, Dave, I felt the one yesterday the, sitting in my seat, Dave, actually. Yeah. Dave, when did your first meme come out on that? Mine came out five minutes after it happened. Whoa. Yes. You beat me to it. Thank you. The <laughs> meme lord. Dave, David Avocado. I, the meme last night was, you know, there's that couple that's sitting in the bed, right? And like, she's like, I bet he's thinking about another woman. That one, you know, that one. Yeah. And and, and the first image is, I bet he's thinking about farming and, and homesteading. And then the next one is her hugging him. That was the meme last night. Does that make right. sense? That normally it's like, I bet he's thinking about other women. Meanwhile, he's thinking about burning up the World Economic Forum or something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. the norm how that meme normally goes. But it was a clever one. Create the light, create the beautiful world we all want to see exist. Basically, I love, I love that. It. I love that because uh, oh, it's it's nine oh six now. Six oh nine was when I got opened my phone during that earthquake. There we go. Uh, the the power of memes are interesting. That's what I appreciate about you, Dave. Is uh, is they you you made a comment about it on your talk today about how AI can't quite figure it out because there's so much cultural context. Yes, and nuance. That's right. And and uh, you really have to put a lot of things together to get it right and that's why they speak to all these truthers why we love that stuff so much is because it's like wow somebody summarized a thought or a feeling or an experience in an image yes not a body of text it's a, it's a visual it's a visual format that is not very uh codified in data language that the computers know right it's an expression of art it's an expression of consciousness that is not easily applicable to the ai pseudo mind so I think it's a it's a been one of the greatest uh, art forms to come out in the pop culture of the of this freedom scene in the last five years. And you've been on it, man. I've been on it for ten years. I've been a, <laughs> I've been on that train. I, I realized where it was going about ten years ago, and I, I just went all the way into it. And uh, and then you know now we're in a we're in a basically a fight for our freedom. Absolutely. So now it's like 
all gloves are off. You know, it used to be just focused on like health messages, friendly messages, support messages, you know, messages of betrayal, things that people had been going through emotionally, that kind of stuff. But now we've we've opened it up into the world of politics. We've opened it up into the world of like our what our destiny is, because our destiny rides on the line right now. That's kind of epic. I want to run a, a thought uh, by you guys. Um, you're familiar with Andy Warhol. Yes. Right? So we're talking about pop culture. You ever heard that quote he had is in the future? Everybody will be famous for 15 minutes. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think it was one of the most genius quotes. I mean, I don't know if How it's true or not. I mean, it's true in many cases. I mean, some people get famous for 30 minutes. But but, but the pursuit the, of I, wanting to be famous, everybody wants it. This is social media. It was, it was a critique of social media. Right. I mean, it, 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 he was a social know, media but, kind of guy then, really. Was. Right? Because he was creating iconic memes. Yeah. Like I wonder if we wouldn't have memes without his art in a way. Pop art is quite profound. I don't really like it. I didn't like the modern art stuff. I like, I don't know, I like more classic art, I guess. It's just me. But but at the same time, that pop critique that speaks so much in a single image, I wonder if there's some, you know, some ancient memory going on there. Could be. Maybe. Yeah, I, I was I would think so. I mean I gotta it, maybe I'm gonna recycle some of Warhol's art in my meat. I dropped that right. Yeah, too. I'm like, I'm going, I'm wait a second here. Oh, hold on. Feed, bro. <laughs> what are you saying about that? Bro? I was just well, I'm trying to think now what would replace the Campbell soup can. Right. Um 909 uh, switcher. It's 909. <laughs> No, it's just like he he also was like a uh, culturally in, endowed in terms of like at his warehouse, the films he was doing were basically based within the cultural milieu of that time. The idea of art being uh, something related to the, the pop sensibility, right, of 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 questioning um, the, the, the mainstream and all that. And so it was diversive and it was even though um, a lot of it was very much drug ridden. <laughs> Our drug uh, fueled. Um, yeah, there's something to Andy Warhol. And um, I'm always uh, trip out on, you know, what would it be like to be at those parties back then and the people you're hanging out with. Here comes. Like, I always think of the story. And... The song came up early in this week, which is I was made for loving you by Kiss. Uh -huh. Paul Stanley walked into Studio 54 and that whole song came to him. And that was a Warhol thing. Right. Oh, yeah, and yeah. so, you know, the, the effect that that had on pop culture, you know, you remember the days when. Kiss was the biggest like rock metal oh, band. I had Kiss posters, and then they my bedroom. then they went disco. Yeah, yeah. then I lost interest. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, you guys are all aware that most of pop culture or, or pop music, especially, was all fabricated. I mean, it's all oh, it it's all it turn and burn, right? Yeah. And, and that that's what I can't stand about pop music today. It it literally sounds like the New World Order. <clears throat> Everything is pitch corrected. Nothing's organic yeah. for me. The best music is is acoustic music. Analog. The resonance of acoustic music and even analog. Listening to a record, the sound of a record. Yeah. The because it's real yeah. audio. Digital representation is dots. So you draw a straight line or a waveform. The digital representation is samples of that along the way. And the higher the resolution, the get better it gets. Right. Trust me, as a DJ for 25 years, playing vinyl was always far superior to the digital stuff we play on now. I mean, it's a great example of sacrificing quality for convenience, which is, I think, one of the big traps and how they get us. Right. Um, and so I'm I'm guilty of it as a DJ. I used to I have a lower right shoulder than my left for carrying a 200 pound record bag everywhere I went traveling. And it sounded way sweeter in the club, but then I found out, hey, I can play. I have thirty five thousand songs on my computer. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, analog records sound so much better because it's not a it's not a digital copy, right? It's the pure analog waveform of it's, the of the of the, of the song. And, and, and wouldn't you agree? Uh, would you agree with that, David? That is that we continuously, as as we are awakening, going closer to the truth, the new world order is also pulling everybody away from the truth more than ever i th i think that we're gaining a lead on them i think yeah. that they're i think that they're falling behind i think that they're desperate i think that uh too many people are waking up too fast i think they're trying to speed up their plan mm -hmm. um and i don't think they're ready um but i do think there will be two realities in the future the people that just don't see and yes. they're going to be living in that yes. world and, and and people like us that we're going to be um you know living in our world uh i forget who said it i've been i've been repeating it a lot but um, we don't need to take down the government. I think you all said this. We need to I just re we just need to make them obsolete. Yes. Just create our own thing. We need to overgrow the system, as Dave said in his talk today. But we also need to compost it first. 
Mm -hmm. I like there's that. many parts that we can reuse because it's actually not all bad. The system was built for us. It's just the devil's got the keys and, 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 and it's in it's his realm. But we learn the rules. We can, we, we can take this puppy over. But, but I'm not talking about some revolution, which is just a spinning of the, you know, about round the berry bush again. It's, it's, a, it's an evolution. It's, a, it's, a, it's an upward spiral. You can go in a downward spiral. You get down, down in the dumps, in, down the rabbit hole, as they say. You have a downward spiral. On the inverse, you have an upward spiral. So th these are these are things that we talk about in permaculture of, of, of creating abundance that that stacks on itself and self replicates and and, and creates a uh, what do you call an exponentiality to it spiraling up into the next level absolutely next level I, I I like the idea of let's just build a new system and just we'll just recycle what we can from the old I'm a recycler personally I mean every man's got to have his junkyard. Yep. And things things do come in handy. I mean, all of a sudden I go, oh, wait, I wait there. Oh, that's in that drawer over there. OK, yeah, it, it comes in handy. Ten years later, it's happened. So, you know, every man has his junkyard. I'm glad you're saying that because my wife is in my mind. I kind of threw that there, in there so, for uh... you because I, I guess you're probably like me. Um, You got to have a junkyard. We I, I finally ripped my shed out, by the way, in Ontario, which was kind of a junkyard. And uh, the, I have this lady who's she's just the best ever, Helen. And she's our she's coaching us on how to deal with the province, the county, whatever you call it. Yeah. Um, on how to deal on the the uh, what is it? They call it the um, what it's like a county. Anyway, so she's been coaching us on what to do with the with that piece of land. She's like scrape it all the way down to the bottom. So we ripped out the old shed and we scraped it to the bottom. Boom, a spring pops up right next to the house. Right on the Canadian Shield, too. How right on the Canadian that? Shield. So I'm going to show that to you, actually. It's wow. a cool one. Dave, let's talk about that meme that you put out the other day, the list of everything from 2020 oh. to 2024. Jeez. How, how is that? How? What is going on there? It, you I, know, it. because this, okay, here, you ready for it? Yeah. Okay. Life's fake. Yeah. Life is fake. That's how. That because it, the real every nothing is totally real. This is that thing of probabilities. Nothing is totally fake. It's in an in, this is Charles Fort philosophy. It's and as oh. as long as I try to push 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 and go, this is really actually real. The oh. unreal and the fake will push in against and go. What about this? What about that? Well, you're denying this. Now you're denying that. So ultimately, all philosophy is about bullying in a position. Okay. That's why it's a probability. Like I can't. That's like me bullying and saying peanut butter for everybody. That's all you so, get. This idea of peanut butter for everybody or one jab fits all is absolute lunacy. One jab fits all. It's, so, it's absolute lunacy. It's absolutely the craziest thing ever. It's like one food fits all or one anything fits all. Nothing could be more bizarre. Nothing could be further away from reality. And so that our harmonic deception has taken over our cosmology and pushed all the stuff. This is real. We're going to bully it in and this is good. It's going to be real. And then we go, what about this? Uh, don't look at that. Censor it. Get rid of it. This is starting to accelerate because that bullied in position, people are starting to go, what about this? Look at that. Oh, my God. I looked at it from this side and that side is all bullshit. And then more and more censorship is required to keep the thing afloat. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. Yes. That, I'm that, sharing the meme. Uh, I'll put it in the chat. here. OK, like great. That's what we're talking about. So life is fake in a certain way, in the sense that, like, this is not a totally real or totally fake reality. It's in between. And therefore, hyper synchronicities like this. Can happen. Let me get. Can I read it? I want to yeah, read yeah, this, yeah, I, yeah. or I can find it on my phone. But let me just read yeah, it. Real quick. I just shared it on Twitter. Okay, oh. twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty four. The Chiefs in the 49ers Super Bowl, both in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty four. Whoops. Lamar Jackson wins MVP. Lamar Jackson is favorite to win MVP. He didn't win M MVP, by the way. Um, but close enough. Ravens win M uh, NFC North. The Ravens won AFC North. Chiefs win AFC West. Chiefs won the AFC West. Texans win AFC South. Texans won AFC South. Chargers last in AFC West. Chargers were last in the AFC West. This is the, the Super Bowl football. Washington last in the NFC East with 13 losses. Washington last in the NFC East with 13 losses. Panthers last in the NFC South. Panthers were last in the NFC South. 49ers win NFC West. 49ers win NFC West. This is the same in 2020 and 24. Cardinals last in NFC West. Chiefs are in the, are the home team. And I can just go on this list. Four Niners are the number one seed. They lost. Billy Elish won song of the year. And by the way, if you always look at just what's going on in Las Vegas, that will tell you how rigged it all is. Billy Elish won song of the year. Billy Elish won song of the year. Chiefs 600 possession, um, 600 plus 600 preseason odds to win the Super Bowl. Same Dave, in so 2024. Is, is this the quickening? 
Is that what is it? We're, 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 we're ex- um, what's happening? We're accelerating towards an inversion, a total inversion of reality. And this is one of the things that yeah, this is a very Steiner type of thing. As the Antichrist approaches, everything gets completely inverted so, and it comes in waves. So the list waves are like this. This is a wave of things. The, li- the list goes on and on. But the last thing on the list is COVID starts in March 2020. And we're two weeks away from March. So, will Dave, in your opinion, will X come to get us? No, they, no, they're gonna, <laughs> they're, they're gonna, gonna go. They've already decided to go with the war. They're gonna try to call off the election due to a war, and they're gonna try to draft people. And and I personally think that this will be, you know, everyone's always like, you know, they get black filled so intensely that they like the Republicans, the Democrats are just the same. They're not the same. They are not the same. The Democrats are worse. They're worse. Now I get the angle that like, okay, the con cons, right? That they're bad because they're ditch they're running us off into a ditch right the, the constitutional conservatives the con cons they're running us off into a ditch so they're they might in a certain mindset be worse but who's actually running the democrat party is pure satanic evil the republican party is just a bunch of bozos idiots total morons thefts and, and they got some know. bohemian grove attendees they've got of course they've too, got right? that in there too of course course yeah. but it, the the democrat party is more organized to evil they are very highly harmonic and they are ready How to about wreck this, would you agree same with the liberals in canada and i agree i 100 percent agree would you also agree that during the george hw bush days mm-hmm. they had the evil like, yeah for sure not with their bunk so, just, so they swing back and forth it swings it's back just, and forth see that's that's a steiner thing right there you can know you can't that's why you can't say it's this because it might move on you it's all dynamic yeah, it's dynamic. It's all moving. And so if you if you look where the light is, you're like, it's not it does have nothing to do with like the Republican Party, but it definitely has nothing to do with the Democrat Party or the liberals or the NDP in China or Canazuela. Yes, the NDP. My God. <laughs> you know, things in Canazuela have gotten so bad that people are literally like fleeing for their lives. You know, that's what look, I've met tons of them here. They're like, oh, I'm going to look at this property. I'm staying down here. I'm going to this country there, Guatemala. I'm going to keep I'm going to Nicaragua. It's gotten to that point. So anyway, back to our story, the the nature of this is that it's going to get more and more crazy. But at the same time, you know, is that this is how I normally illustrate this. I'll give you a little illustration as the evil. See, the evil is going like this, pushing this all down. But look, watch this. See, there's the hand right here. This is all pushing down. But look at that. Look at that. That's us right there. We get pushed up. It's the reason why you, I'm sure, in your life were pushed up by the COVID nonsense. It pushed you up. It accelerated your growth. You actually probably had one of the best years of your life, maybe in 2020 or 2021 or 2022. I suspect you tell me, maybe put it in the comments. So you got actually elevated by it. And that's a that's a kind of an oxymoron or a it's a paradox. You're like, wait, this was the worst ever. How could it have been better for me? But 2020, 2021, 2022 and especially 2023 were phenomenal years in some strange way. And I was like, how is this possible? Because everything's in a dynamic equilibrium. It is. And what do you, what do you say to that, Mike? What's well, I mean, I, I think it's the important catalyst in the reality um, that uh, propels great change and great cycle switches is when you have these big swings. So we get this swing and then essentially nature always seeks balance and it drives the thought leaders in a certain way to and to help the awakening. And I think we're going through a great awakening right now. And I think that uh, I think I, I I think I overheard you earlier, Curtis, saying like the uh, anal, anal Schwab over at the WEF um, is doing us all a great service. And I totally agree. And I, yes. I think, yeah, obviously there's hubris there and there's a, probably a deep satanic drive, uh, as, as Steiner would call an harmonic force behind that but i also i also think there is a divine purpose in their soul contract that they've signed to help propel propel humanity forward in a kind of weird twisted way so i think those who see through it are finding each other are going to events like this music and sky the one i do uh greater reset anarcho poco they're all popping up everywhere and um and we're coming together and we're creating solutions and i think uh it's important that uh we go through these cycles in reality Otherwise, um, uh, you know, I, I think evil serves that important purpose, to be honest, in this dual form of, of reality that we live in. And this is a absolute perfect segue to our next guest on the Anarcho Poco Variety <laughs> Hour. We have Matt Presti. This guy has got some real gravy. We were talking about Steiner. We we're talking about the imbalance of the new world order and all these things. 
you got a lot to say about that, Matt. I do. I do. Curtis, wonderful. Um, Mr. Winner. This is the winner's circle. So it's an honor to <laughs> yes. be here. And of course, that great man down there who needs no introduction. Cheers, gentlemen. My first cheers, time meeting him. Cheers. Boom. Yeah. Cheers. Right on. There we go. But uh, there's some really great folks here. I've, I've learned a whole lot. And to add to the conversation, to keep the ball rolling here, um, I'll bring you some universal law, folks. Uh, the universe is a divine creation, and all things in it are purposeful. And things that are not purposeful have a built-in self-destruct mechanism. Now, universal law is basically the law of balance, which was the talk I gave um, Mr. Wolf over there beautifully gave the Steiner version of the same principle in action. The words may vary, but the concepts are the same that are described here. But basically, universal law states and the law of balance states that to the degree you violate and break the law of balance is to the degree you will be broken by it. And that's why you're seeing these people being broke. And champion that. Cherish it because you don't even have to do the work. They will do the work to destroy themselves because they're working against the, the very law of creation of balance, which organizes and creates and perpetuates this universal construct that we all find ourselves in. Well said, David, Cotto, David Avocado Wolf. What do you got to say to that? Brother? I like that. I like that philosophy. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, fear that goes around. There's a lot of um, just lack of hope you know the hope disappears and we, we couldn't be more hopeful actually you know as this we're in the apocalypse phase which means that the truth is coming out the curtain's been lifted you know now we see the wizard of oz back there and then the next phase is the community building that's a lot of work there's a lot of things to be done it's like we, we, get out of your fear get out of your hopelessness it's like we need your help we, we need people on farms Amen. and and by the way i spent a lot of time you know looking at the homelessness problem in los angeles san francisco get them on farms it's the easiest solution. That was Rudolf Steiner's solution to it all. He said, get them on a biodynamic farm, find out where they're best at. Some people be best at admin at the front desk. Some would be best right out there planting. Some would be best, you know, growing their favorite crop, tobacco or whatever. It's th They'll find out where they fit into the world and work through their escapism or their hypermaterialism. Usually with the drug addicts, it's hyper escapism. And then they'll finally become a useful addition to society. I can tell and you help us all. Uh, amen. And I can tell you my work in the urban farming space for many years, we saw that I traveled around the United States, particularly California, saw veteran recovery programs, criminal recovery programs, street kid recovery programs. You get them on urban farms. I'd say get them out of the city altogether. But the idea of what you're saying is it, I, I'm buttressing that in that it is absolutely true. I've witnessed it. You get people, their hands in the dirt, feet on the earth, get those negative ions, right? Yep. Grow that food, eat your own food, right? It's life-changing. I remember the first time I ate my own salad when I grew my, my food for the first time. I was a suburban kid. I didn't grow up growing food. Whoa. When I ate my own vegetables, I felt it was transcendent. I literally, I started crying because I, I felt I felt this is the beginning of a huge stage of empowerment that that, that there's probably no limit to. There's a deep fulfillment in it. I will say that. There's a deep fulfillment. So, you know, there's a thing about happiness, but ha happiness might be transitory, but fulfillment is something that builds with momentum over time. And so it's it's something that's with you through the ages, a, a feeling of fulfillment, right? And that's something I want to kind of bring out because happiness gets kind of thrown out there, like happy, unhappy, you know, it's, it seems very fleeting, but the feeling you get from farming, for example, is a feeling of fulfillment. The feeling for me, I'm a tree guy. So I got one point. I, we actually overgrew the government. I, I got 1.4 million trees in the ground in this world, in my life. I completely terraformed the whole big island of Hawaii. That whole big island of Hawaii, they will, they will never be able to re remove durian from that island. They will never be able to remove jackfruit from that island. You brought we the, got it up you brought in all those stinky valleys, fruit. every one of those valleys, right? <laughs> stinky fruit. Stinky, yeah. stinky foot fruit. Those, that stinky fruit. So <laughs> I feel like to, I'm fulfilled from that. Something is like, I'm really a John Lapp Johnny Appleseed in no, that way. I feel David fulfillment Appleseed. from that. Yeah. And so I'm like, yeah, this is epic. The uh, avocado I, presence in the great state and nation of Hawaii never be removed it can never be removed wow powerful i i would say the greatest epidemic of our time is that humanity has lost their way in knowing that they have a divine purpose here on in their incarnation and most people have no clue that they've come here to do something magical that they've set themselves up to do from the very beginning and they've completely lost their way 
And so, yeah, having giving someone the the hope and the inspiration through farming is a great step to finding that fulfillment, as Dave's talking about. Right. I, I want to just pick, pitch a question to Matt here. During Dave's talk today, uh, he he seemed to be resonating a little bit of what you were talking about the other day. Um, the idea of Lucifer. Yep. And Arc Archon. Aramon. 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 Yeah. What, 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 what's your What's your take on all that? Well, I I actually created a graphic about. 10 years ago and i showed it to him after the talk but to me studying the russell work walter russell for those of you not familiar philosophy.org check it out um basically russell presents a third way or a third view i like to call it triality versus di di duality we, we actually live in a triality because we're missing the middle and the middle is that which doesn't move. And that's why our senses don't notice it much like a door jam, a door opens and closes. Everybody's sensations and sensory um, senses are focused on the movement of the door opening and closing. They don't realize that the power source is not in the motion of the door, but rather the fulcrum, which does not move. So it became my purpose to notice what wasn't moving. And that's where God dwells. That's where the creator dwells. That's where all power is, is at 90 degrees to motion. And that's dead tap center of every human being has all the power of the universe that they can express at will and fulfill your divinity to get behind the motion of the seesaw, which is illusory. You learn to command the seesaw and command it to fulfill your divine purpose. Is this how Shaolin monks stand still and people throw like push them and they, they don't even move? That's a good use of chi. And yeah. that's the, the universal it, power, it, which hopping into that grounded right, foundation, which Russell calls the sex urge. But to, to be frank about the answer to the question, I drew this graphic and it was a devil on each shoulder instead of a devil and an angel. And the angel was in the center. Mm. And and that's the salvation. And that's you. Each and every one of you have the solution, the answer and the source of all universal power. Dead tap center inside of yourself. Learn to tap it. Hover closer to the fulcrum of yourself and you'll go through situations that are would have years ago sent you off the edge. You'll be able to guide and handle that. It's called being in the zone in sports. It's called the. Uh, uh, I call it getting primed. Yeah. Isn't that Tony Robbins thing is, is priming. Right? <laughs> yeah. Prime. Get into yep. state. Yep. Yes. Getting, getting into state. Get that into was what state. he would say. Yes. yes. Exactly. Get into state. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. That was beautiful. Oh, and and yeah. Steiner Thanks. talks about the middle way, right? It's the middle way. Yeah. It's the it's the way that the Christ brought forth, the, right? The narrow it's path. The narrow path. path the pool, yeah. the, and uh, so the other the illusion of of the God and the devil is is a, in, in in a way a false dichotomy, or or it's a false. It's a it, it, it's not it's it's showing some of the truth but not all the truth, right? And that's their game, isn't it? Is to get you just slightly off because then it's easier. If they try to one eighty us in our understanding, we, we it goes too noticed. But well, if they slightly divert us to something that's sort of similar, I we'll think where it. we are in, in the in the narrative is that it starts out that way. It starts a little off. Oh, we'll just do this little lie. Okay, we got this little thing in here to just distract people. Oh, then we're going to take them this way. And but in the inevitable run of the parasite or these forces that are there to recycle or push us back towards the middle and say, "Hey, you're off track," they eventually run to the 180 degree mark. So that's what you're saying today, which means they yeah. eventually expose themselves. Yeah. Yes. Right. And eventually, because they're just like, hey, look over here, Captain Obvious. And you can see like, oh, Captain Obvious. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's the thing that we're in. We're in that moment now. It's like that's why the Great Awakening is happening, because it's like being people see it. They're like, whoa, check this out. It's a nexus point. And it, and anything's it, the, the future is up in the air. It could go either way. So now's the time for action. I, I believe people should get involved and. Find a purpose in your life because that's really what Create. that that's where your happiness comes from. Having a purpose and leap from your cot every morning. Every morning. <laughs> I have a good friend of mine. He exposed me to Walter Russell's work and he actually texted me. He called me this morning. Actually, it was crazy. Oh, he called me. Sink. Yep. Right. And I was like, whoa, he called. I said, I said, I'm an anarchopoga. I'll call you back. Anyway, um, he's he was he, he's a Titanic entrepreneur from New York City. Grew up as a New York City street kid, was a graffiti artist, eventually in a, in a harrowing escape from the police in a chase because he was graffitiing trains and they put undercover on him. And he he got the guy caught him three times. and He got out three times. And after that, he's like, I'm going to I got to get my life together. He joined the U.S. Army. and He's like, I'm going to go for general. But he had a felony on his record and had to be he was honorably discharged from the military and then became an entrepreneur. And he he was one of those guys like. 
he memorized Ogmandino's book, The Greatest Salesman in the World, every word. Wow. Every word. He can yeah. recite it from the top to the bottom. You ask him right now, recite the entire book. He can recite the entire book from top to bottom. And one of the things in Ogmandino's book is wake up, leap from your cot and attack the day or start into your day. Don't get up and go like, oh, God, another day. <laughs> like, no, get up and leap, get in. And what was interesting about that is I was with a friend of mine recently and he remembered Doug. This guy's name is Doug Evans. Um, he remembered Doug. And the other day he he get gotten out of bed. And he's like, dude, I got out of bed and I was like feeling lethargic. And then all of a sudden it popped into my head. Wake up, leap from your cot. <laughs> Yep. And he and he was like and he 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 told me that and I was like wow that was cool you remember that right at that moment this is the power of getting the reading in see the reading and the writing then third is arithmetic but the reading and the writing is key to activating these thoughts into your mind so you go oh wait not this I'm this wait hold on I'm gonna leap from my cot I got this right if someone's telling you like hey Matt you got this you got this you got this. eventually you'd be like I got this. <laughs> Yeah, I think when people don't know what their true vocation is, once again, like their true path, it's not so stoked to get up in the morning, right? So it's like it's so important to like help others if you can, you know, find, show them through your life that be insp inspirational by finding your own path first, really going deep inside internally and finding what your vocation is and being, that's what I try to be an example to my sons every day is like i'm out living my life that i want to live my hero's journey and i feel so bad for those all those people that uh don't get to experience that and just dr like dread waking up but i'll tell you what we're seeing less and less of that they're being forced out of those jobs because all of that stuff's collapsing so that's just another beautiful silver lining to this all right it is it's i mean everything is you know everything is in this dynamic equilibrium so we're going to be raised up high. We've got to be ready for it. Actually, we got to be ready for it. We will achieve heights. We didn't believe were possible in our life. I, I do know that for sure is going to be the result of the continuing evolution of the world economic forum nonsense and the complete corruption of governments. Somehow the forces of nature are going to uplift those who are on the right track and drive us forward to create the seeds of the new thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. And, and the way to gauge yourself to know that you're on the right track Start looking for your synchronicities. The more in balance you are with your life's purpose, the more in balance you are with the creator's purpose. And you work together as one moment to moment, day by day. And your synchronicities are your gauge. As you do this and you practice this, make it a daily practice of moment to moment to moment connection to the source of power within you, which is the mind, which is the creator, the narrow path. The more that becomes a practice in your life, the more the synchronicities will increase. So the synchronicities are your temperature, your barometer for your success in moving forward as a purposeful individual yeah. and human being on planet Earth. I totally love that, Matt. And I, there's a lot of like Jung talked about synchronicities and there's a lot of great philosophical ponderings around that. And I, and I do like to think that, you know, because I've seen the sinks in my life a lot when I'm on the right path. What's like, what do you think is actually going on there in the actual, like, as we say, the meta science of that? Well, it's you're, you're fulfilling your divine purpose. Every mm -hmm. act that you take that's purposeful and in balance with the universe and your own unique purpose results in a syn synchronicity of sorts. Yeah. And sometimes it's apparent, sometimes it's not. But I think it's it's inevitable, at least for me, when I stopped, as as David said, hitting the rails yeah, of, yeah. you know, and scraping against the rails and, and start driving in a centered way, the synchronicities increased in a multiplicitous, multiplicitous way. Can we bring my He's spoke to you. Well, right yeah, there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring in Mike right now. Okay. And then, and we'll, yeah. Okay. So our next guest, folks, on the uh, Anarcho Poco Garden Variety Show, <laughs> we've got uh, Mike Wilkerson. And this dude has got some serious gravy. Uh, his presentation, you know, I've been a truther for 24 years. I've been down the rabbit hole for 24 years officially. And I'm not that old. I'm 44. And uh, I don't see stuff too often that that really blows my mind. I have to say, actually, you two gentlemen, I didn't know before. I, 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 I We have never met. I haven't seen your stuff. But your guys' stuff fucking blew my mind. And uh, this gentleman shared... A mountain of evidence uh, in his presentation today about trees that are bigger than you can possibly imagine. 
Mike, welcome to the stream, brother. Hi, everybody. You got to keep that mic close to yourself. Tell us about the trees, dude. Tell oh, us wow. about some trees. Do wanna, Where do you, do you start? Hear? Where do you start with something so big? <laughs> explain uh, explain the petrification. You know, you talked about petrification today and that process and how this is everywhere. With all, all these geological sites that we thought were rock look like tree rings, don't they? Yeah, I call it biogeology. It's uh, it's it's a term I came up with because as I looked at a lot of the mainstream geological narratives, I found haunting. <laughs> Hold this microphone and just talk to it like your punk rock singer. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. And okay. Yeah. So um, where do I where do I begin? Uh, biogeology is just this idea that things may not have happened the way we were taught geologically you know this idea of layers of sediment laying down pressure and then rock turning metamorphic because of all that pressure and this is happening over millions and millions of years of time mm -hmm. so i have been looking at rocks now for six years from another perspective the idea that uh some of what we see may actually be biological and not uh, in the in the way that we're told because they're telling us that these sedimentary layers are are all kinds of dead creatures and and uh and plant life that have died and laid down and then eventually they're creating these layers especially if they're under the ocean floor and then it gets harder and harder and harder and then eventually tectonic activity will shift those layers upward and that's what we're seeing as as the mountains so that happens over hundreds of millions of years and i think there are far simpler and better explanations that are more encompassing but they're they completely go against the mainstream geological narrative so they they also can't be really accepted yeah. by by the mainstream because they're so radical and absurd this idea that trees the size you know miles wide at the base could have stretched up into the heavens who knows how high yeah uh that's the stuff of myth and fairy tale that there's nothing there's no substance to it as they as they perceive yeah but people haven't really looked into it the way i have so <laughs> and, and so what with that is there so you're coming in uh and you're and and and, and these are some you, you folks need to see these images we don't we don't have them here uh i saw mike unless unless we do um is there somewhere what would you say can somebody go to your website like where where can people go I, right to see some I don't of stuff? I don't have a website. I just have a YouTube channel. Okay, what's your YouTube it's channel? It's called Stellium Seven. S T E L L I U M. And if you're interested in the tree thing, I mean, one of the best places to start would be, I think it's actually on my the homepage of the YouTube channel, and it's called "The Great Trees Were Were Real." <laughs> Here's proof. And. uh a lot of people are looking at things like Devil's Tower in Wyoming, which is this basalt column structure, and a lot of other places around the world that have this this basalt, and they're they're saying, "Oh, this looks like tree," and so you know they're they're claiming that it is tree, and and maybe it maybe it is, but it's also a hotly contested topic, and there are people even in the truther community that that are not interested in uh, in entertaining the idea, and they think it's absurd. Even people who are flat earthers are kind of vocally outspoken against the idea. Um, but ultimately, the best evidence for the big trees isn't the basalt columns. It's not Devil's Tower, though I think it could very well be a tree. Um, there's way better evidence, and there's all kinds of different evidence. And all of those things individually can be explained away by the mainstream geological narrative as they do mental backbends in order to explain how some of the rock features that I showed in my presentation today could could have come about. And as we've seen with medicine, with cosmology, earth shape, you know, they every individual shred of information can always be explained away. And, you know, if they want to even address the arguments, which they usually don't. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so um but then then you have to ask yourself as you start to look at all this evidence and i'll talk about some of it in a moment but but is there a tapestry forming is there a a a coherent flow of logic as you're looking at different things and putting them into a different model that's not like 
what we were taught in schools. Yes. Um, yes. And so you're looking at data points. And as you add, stack up more and more data points, it stops being a, a trick of the mind or a flight of fancy or... There's some uh, patterns coming in. Yeah, here, right? yeah, you're seeing patterns and they're all dovetailing. Yes. Very, very beautifully <laughs> in ways that match what we know of trees and how they grow and what their fibers look like and all the different species. And we know that petrified trees exist. And we can look at all of that from the decomposition, how a tree looks like it's when it's on the ground, it's starting to break down. You can look at it uh, when, you know, it's it's broken and, and all of these different things manifest different visuals right yeah <laughs> so and and so that lines up on so many different levels with tree that the question is is, is that pareidolia it just mm -hmm. looks like it but it really isn't uh, are we talking about apophenia which is like a it's a mania where the person is recognizing patterns that don't exist that's the word for that so it's kind of like a pareidolia would be the visual version of that and then apophenia is the pattern version of that and when it comes to the scientific examination of this kind of stuff and looking at it the critics will you know they'll say dunning kruger effect where you're not an expert in this field you don't really know anything about what you're looking at so the mainstream model is trying to get us to deny what's apparent to our senses yes <laughs> it, it, it's a cosmic gaslighting Yes, it, it, that, and, that's kind of yeah. how I interpret it. It's like it's it's a it's a cosmic joke that if you fools are so if you're so if you're if you're so stupid to ignore your own eyes, it's almost like uh, in equity in law, we say equity doesn't aid a volunteer. It's it's a sort of a giving notice that if you can't see the most fucking obvious thing and like say the the the, the tranny stuff right now is, is yeah. that in a way, too, is you can't see the most obvious and you can't comment on the most obvious though it's yep, right in front right. of your face i call it the unquestionables right <laughs> yeah. and and there there are certain ones that you're not allowed to ask in society because just by asking a question you're immediately labeled an idiot or a fool or you know a, a conspiracy theorist a science denier and all, all of these these phrases and so you know there's a lot of those earth shape is a big one gravity is another you know um the the heliocentric model uh the big bang uh yeah. all, the, these are all things that if you question that you're you're off the deep end right yeah. and so uh, as we saw in 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 um david weiss's presentation today on the subject of, of flat earth and he's he's pretty open about the fact he ultimately doesn't know what shape it is but he knows what it isn't and he knows what it measures and he knows that there are all these different observable uh, observable blah, 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 i can't even speak observable phenomenon that we can look at and measure that actually line up more with a flat earth than than you know a, a supposed ball sure um so like you were saying before what was it spiritual gaslighting or not it was, yeah it was just some was kind it? of cosmic gaslighting is that it's it, maybe gaslighting is not the right term but it's it, it's just that we're showing you something absurd and telling you that you're crazy to think otherwise and is that not gaslighting that is gas yeah that is gaslighting it. right that's the definition of, <laughs> yeah. that's the definition so so but but by by and you know avocado wolf earlier was talking about this i and, and when he talked about the meme of 2020 2020 to 2024 that list of things is that perhaps right now there's a sort of a quickening happening is that it almost seems to me as a truther who has been in almost as back, far back as 9 11 well literally that's a year before 9 11 is when I learned about the Federal Reserve. Um, it was slower, right? 9 11 was a big one, but then what was the real next one? But since COVID, the things that are going on and the things that we're seeing every day that are just waving in front of our face, mm -hmm. it seems like it's just accelerated. What do you guys think? Oh, I definitely agree, man. I, I, it was really that meme was really interesting. It just kind of shows, I think, the sort of reality the uh, glitch in the matrix in a way right it was like whoa it's like we they normally wouldn't probably have that maybe do that for 10 years at a time and instead they they they're ramping it up and getting it faster and faster as it, it or is this seems like there's this race right now um uh, of those who think that want to have fooled us into thinking that they're in control when they can't even create anything they require us to create the reality we were talking about this just just before we got Parasites. on here 
they are parasites and they literally require us who that is tied in to our uh, creative abilities because we are actually tapped into our moral right through the law of the creation, right? This universal law. We're the ones that can actually create and manifest the reality. They cannot. So they require us, require us for that. And as the awakening happens, then I think they're um, ramping everything up as fast as I can as they can to try to get as many people off that track of awakening. So, um, but also I think they just can't help themselves. I think they're so so evil um, that they just feed into it more and more and more because they are so desperate. I don't know. It's I'm just thinking of like the Grammys recently and like the way pop music. We were talking about pop music earlier, like how crazy, like how many devil horns and like like how they it is. is more is more out in the open than it's ever been. Ever been in the 80s and 90s when I grew up, it was just metal bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and um, and it wasn't controversial because th that's been metal for a long time. Yeah, yeah. But then seeing it in all these pop stars and all that, what's your take on uh, on these, all this, these inversions and, uh, you know? Well, like Mike made a great point. Um, they can't do this. They yeah. they contract our creative services to build their fucking world system. <laughs> yeah, can I cuss on this show. Oh yeah, okay, good. Can right, I, right. I so I uh, just want to make sure. Sorry, kids. Um. Basically, if you think about that deeply, they contract our creativity to build their prison that then we get to live in. So who's building the fucking prison, people? We are. We're building it. Yeah. And they're, they're if administering that's true, our affairs. Yeah, they're just administrators. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I can tie that back. Into if, 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 if <laughs> we realize that we're the builders, we're the creators... Why don't we just build something different? There's your fucking solution. Yeah. Get busy. Put your art pedal to the metal people and get off your ass, leap out of your cot every morning and get to work on building your life. We have 60 to 80,000 human thoughts a day. Which one are you going to hold? Hold it until you build it and it stands before you. Wow. Boom. I love that. Yeah. That many thoughts a day. Wow. Isn't yeah. that amazing? The abundance of the human mind. Okay. You were going to ask that. Where do the trees fit into that, brother? Yeah, no, I was just thinking of one of the common questions I get is why the lie? You know, if, yeah, yeah. if this were, if there were, if this were true, wouldn't it be fun that this was part of our past? But obviously it doesn't work with the size of the earth and, and that sort of thing. So, but, but ultimately if, if there's truth to it, then we're talking about resources and, and there's all of these material resources that, if they're aware of the truth of major portions of our physical realm and how it's constructed, and we are unaware of that, then they have a distinct advantage. And and these trees held gold and iron, I mean, and uh, silver and copper, and also the, the the gemstones are coming from them through the petrification process. So the the why the lie and and the gaslighting is uh, I, now now I wanted to tie it back to what what we were talking about before, but I. I I lost the jump. I lost the jump link. Jump Sorry if it comes back to me. Come back to you. Know, why the gaslighting? Because they have to cover the fact that we're the ones building all this, you know. I'd say. Oh, right. So building, terraforming, right. mining. This is all part of all right. everything that the mind is envisioning and creating. Yeah. There, you know, that that is happening on a scale that's so grand that we can't even conceive right. of it. This is where it gets into like Tartaria and mud flood mm -hmm. and and there star forts and there we go uh, the world's fairs and all, the, all these by the way things. they all link together all of this stuff. You and I but, won but the esoteric award for discussions <laughs> Sunday night. You guys won the uh, there's an esoteric award here. Well, there is now. <laughs> okay, we brought it. Yes, baby. we had literally a two hour discussion and wow. several people sitting around and and they came up afterwards. I didn't even know they were listening. They're like, dude. You guys were talking about some crazy shit, <laughs> some crazy esoteric shit. Yes, like, I guess we get the award. For... Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's cool. Stuff. Well, it's cool because, like I was saying when I first popped on here, it's. I think this is my first time in that Archipelago, but I've been following this scene for quite some time, being in the sort of quote unquote crypto space for a long time. Um, even though I've mostly left that space by now. Um, but you know, I, I always envisioned it was a lot of political talk, talk about anarchy, talk talk about you know the philosophy of anarchy and individuation and and uh, voluntarism and and not so much of the deeper spiritual uh, focus and the focus on the true history and all that. And I think the evolution of awakening always ends up going there. 
right? And I, it's cool to see this scene now going through that evolution where those deep, deep, deep questions about the nature of reality, who we are, where we live, and all that is what really matters because that's what then will allow us to frame the future for us when we actually know what the hell we are and what we're here to do. That's a great point. That's a really great point because I, I, I've i said that I kind of have this framework that I use to find freedom. I'll talk about it in my talk later this week, but it's it's first it starts at the mindset is that and, and you could even link that to the body, healthy body, healthy mind, whatnot, and even the spirit. But the mindset has to be there with a basic understanding of that there is something more there is another way there is another there there is a different truth than what we're being told it's the mindset that incentivizes you to pursue the knowledge to find the information to ask the questions once you can do those things you can start to leverage the system right we're talking about maybe there's maybe a lot of this is actually here for us a lot yeah. of this stuff is uh, for us to use we get the resources and then from there we can we then we can start to make decisions of where we where we are what is our space wh where do we live and then we can even can change the politics of it because once we have those other things in place we can actually start i'm not talking about democrat and republican but i'm talking about creating an infrastructure that can help us facilitate these things yeah i'm an anarchist f philosophically but i do understand that there's there's practical application for us to uh, organize ourselves and things that don't have to involve coercion of course Right. Yeah. And to realize, too, that that we constructed all of this. And I like to, to quote Michael Tessarian. I actually used one of his lines in my presentation about all the answers that we need as Western individuals and, and Western world nations are in our arts. We have a rich history of Western tradition that we can readily tap. It's in our DNA. It's rooted in every one of our beings, this tradition, this rich tradition. We don't need to look to the East and rid our egos and get rid of it and end up with a tyrant super ego voice telling us what to do, killing each other, following orders. Fall in love with the word no, get your shit together and start and, creating. And Tifa. Yeah. There you go. Because <laughs> we have built, we built the West. Our ancestors yeah. built the West. These people, this new world order, I posit never existed. We built it all. They don't have any power unless we keep saying yes, sir. So learn to say no. Fall in love with the word no. Keep talking, guys. So, uh, mic drop. You and I, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give me, give me some love, brother. You, you did a great job. This guy's awesome. Check out his YouTube channel. Share, share that again. Thank you. Uh, it's Stellium Seven. S T E L L I U M. We did a seven. We did a great deep dive with mm -hmm. Mike on AlphaCast a couple months ago on the work he's doing in per in actual in person, um, excavating this fantastic. <laughs> I mean, what would you call it, Mike? Uh, Examine. Uh, well, uh, next, you're not out there with <laughs> tools. Examining. You're not yeah. out there with tools, but you're examining uh, what potentially looks like a massive elephant yeah. that has been essentially petrified into a mountain. Um, so, which is just mind blowing to think that we even <laughs> that you know we had we could have something that was living that's that big, but that's what's as it just as a mental operation like right, as an activity just to be able to an intellectual exercise yeah an intell thank you an intellectual exercise where we can even engage with that idea i think is what makes you know where where we're going in this world so exciting and so cool well it's i mean just of itself it sounds completely far-fetched and ridiculous but in the context of the great trees not necessarily right because because yeah. then we're talking about megaflora megafauna which even the mainstream geological narrative admits existed. I mean, yeah. they talk about, you know, meters, meter long dragonflies once upon a time, you know, every, yep. in the fossil yeah. record. So, so it's not such a stretch, but this is much, much bigger. And, and uh, they, they're, you know. Um, and that's right in line with Russell's science, by the way. Hmm. He posits that obviously it's different than what NASA tells us. And it's also different than what flat earth thinks. But what's unique about Russell is all things are born from all things. The sun is a mother father. The earth is a mother father, not a mama, m mother earth. It's a mother father earth because all bodies are doubly charged having two hemispheres. That's just mm -hmm. the nature. A magnet has two hemispheres. Yeah. So with that in mind, all planets are born from the primary, which is the sun. 
and the sun borns the moons, which are the children of the planets and the grandchildren of the sun. All things come from a parent. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting thing because it ties it all together. It's a very uh, well, if you, seamless cosmology. If you want to bring that idea back to flat earth, there's a channel a long time ago. I can't remember the name of it. That was talking about the black sun that mm -hmm. was uh, at the north. Mm -hmm. And we have all the maps with Rupus Nigra, which is basically... I, I can't remember the name of the map, but there, there are multiple versions, but they show it shows a four continent system at the north with rivers flowing in and out of it with your four cardinal directions. Mm -hmm. And then also has uh, this mountain at the center, which is magnetic. Mm -hmm. So our compasses point north and maybe there's a reason they do that. They, I think, as I understand it, I'm, this is not my area of expertise, like for something like gravity or, you know, these subjects... Uh, looking deeply into them and debunking them, I would go to somebody like Austin Witsit. Ooh, he's an amazing, amazing mind. I'm and uh, he's, he does a really good job of uh, poking holes in, in the mainstream yeah. narratives you at see, the highest levels when it comes to science because right. he's actually debated multiple PhDs. Right. Uh, Witsit it gets it. it. With yeah. it gets it. He's coming on Alpha Cast, I think, in a month or two. Yeah, right. he he rocks. Um, uh, so, but but anyway, but in the like even Mouth, even my the, theories just, are are debunked by gravity, supposedly. And, yeah, just to throw the at you in the in the in the Russell model. This is why it's difficult because people don't know about them, so they haven't yeah. studied the model. But and at the end of the day, that's all we've got. Bring your best model to the table, and may the best model win. <laughs> um, in Russell science, gravity is stillness. So it's a gravitic optical universe mm -hmm. where gravity is stillness and divided into shafts upon which motion spins around, including the motion of your body. The motion of any body is the same. It's ubiquitous and it's in the spiral, yep. which is God's signature. That's why you recognize what is creator made and what isn't. Satan's signature is inversion. So it's easy to separate the two once you know what you're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. And is that that stillness that you're talking about? That's is that the fulcrum itself? That is the fulcrum itself. Okay, so and maybe it's not you can visible explain this to fulcrum senses. idea to the listeners. Oh, well, my listeners know what it is. Oh, okay, but, I don't know who. who... Now, now. Well, let I, me I'm let me. Business, but I'm hey, not, out there, whoever you are. Let me introduce. introduce let me I'm, let me introduce the fulcrum between I you two. Got you beat. I asked oh, him okay. I go. asked him already, but yeah. Before we go way off on a tangent, <laughs> guys, sitting next to me on my right, your left is the great. Eurasimo Stylianesis from Here for the Truth. Say what's up, bro. What's up, everybody? <laughs> I just have to say it is such an honor to be here. Curtis, thanks for having me on. My pleasure, brother. Um, you know, this whole conversation and even just, be, even just being here just reminds me of one of my favorite quotes. I had to pull it up by John Steinbeck. St John Steinbeck, and it is, and this I believe that the free exploring mind of the individual human is the most valuable thing in the world. And this I would fight for. The freedom of the mind to take any direction it wishes undirected and this i must fight against any idea religion or government which limits or destroys the individual and i just love Beautiful. coming to events like this because i mean shit, i had never heard of um trees a mile long <laughs> and so it makes me want to dive deeper into your work and like to be around such like great thinkers and people who challenge the status quo in so many arenas is just like it's a gift and a blessing yeah, brother. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's great that everybody has their sort of their own vocation too. Mm -hmm. We're not all researching the exact same thing. We're we're doing it's a huge plethora of people who have found a purpose and a vocation and are pursuing that and using their tools and resources and their minds to further explain it, you know, understand it and teach it and and do what they can to share it. So I admire that, whatever it is. It's a positive, purposeful uh, and man, I, I admire it too, man. A big piece of my work is just supporting people to become who they were born to be. You know, we're all a creation. You look around this room, everything has a purpose. Why we as individuals will not have a purpose. And so I think one of the, the missions of an individual's life is to find that, you know, what do you truly value? You know, what, what are your skills? What are your gifts? And how can you bring that into the world? And ideally, you know, potentially exchange that for value and, and, uh, and create a life. But uh, I, uh, I don't know, man. I just love being around all of you. Likewise, man. Yeah. Tell the, us what the energy uh, here at this conference is amazing. Isn't it? Uh, isn't the it? People insane? are fantastic. It's so I, high I don't frequency, think I've man. seen it's... anybody even remotely in a bad mood, except that you know it's it's really hot, and the people who are working here, the staff is absolutely wonderful. They're really gracious and kind, and uh, here, here. But but I mean, it's just all around. It's it's fantastic, and it's it's wonderful to be able to share 
any idea with anybody and not have to worry about some kind of you know cog dis there's no butt hurt here there's no butt hurt <laughs> we can have totally conversations that are going all over and people uh you know people are chill it's great there's, there's not a lot of pride here if any actually it's a lot of people that are just interested to talk to one another and exchange interesting ideas about how we can figure this fucker out yeah Every, everyone's showing what do you got to say to that brother well no i could say and there you can an individual could have pride for them and who and who they are and, and what they've created and what they've learned and on the flip side still be present and listen to you and hear you out and realize like i don't i i may think i'm certain but can i hold some space for the potential of maybe i'm uncertain or i don't know the things that you know and i just I think for me, man, I'm I'm tired of seeing people arguing at each other online all day. I'm right. You're wrong. Yeah. Throwing out insults. Like, I feel like I'm witnessing uh, junior high behavior where you just find child, yeah, child infantilism, infantilism, tr tr tribal, um, just an inability to. OK, this is where I come from, again, is like in inner health, mental health, nervous system health. So if you can't listen to someone that disagrees with you without freaking out like you got to look in the fucking mirror and do some work and yeah. i'm not saying you have to like be nice all the time we can have passionate discussions sure. and debates and get yeah. after it but like ultimately like what's going on internally for you you know are you really listening are you real are you really present with what someone's saying or are you not right yeah and educated people don't need to resort to insulting no that's not a sign of that's a thing that that, you know? that truthers in the online world uh, you know n nobody here but people will do that oh you believe x you're a fucking idiot right. oh yeah I, don't you hate that oh, like, it's so annoying or you it's like dude have you have you thought that ever you could be wrong like you got it all yeah. figured out the whole time or just like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. and it's something i say often is like you can be into what someone says and then they say one thing that you disagree with and you're like oh, i can't believe i fucking believed anything that you know, ever said i know i know i know i know like it's just i don't know or, or everyone who watched the putin interview is stupid that's yeah yeah controlled yeah I mean, yeah come on i know you know not everything that's the black pill movement which you got to be very careful of yeah everything's a conspiracy Every, and everything's a, everything's a conspiracy. controlled opposition i need to escape Everybody's this realm because op. it's a prison yeah. a fallen state i mean we you you can read into that bullshit and you can stifle your life and trip yourself up for eternity but it's better in my opinion, study the great Western traditions, hermeticism being one of them, which teaches the magic of the soul and how to live in concord with your own balance and express your dreams and desires on this planet the way that only you can do when you connect with that source of power. And before I forget, Curtis, I want to say thank you very much for the invitation up here and the work you do. You've been a joy to speak to. This is a cool guy. I'm going to check his workout. You know, <laughs> so many people that I never even knew existed, but yeah. a bunch of podcasters are here and it just, it's just a great platform. So thanks. And, hey, and, and this was, this, this happened kind of on the fly. Uh, I thought, Hey, I share my abundance. I got a, a lot of, a lot of subscribers on this YouTube channel. Get you guys on here, you know? So where do we find out about your stuff, man? here for the truth.com you know this is okay my Ooh. podcast is here for the truth i got my little shirt on right here it's a podcast i started with my uh one of my dearest friends and uh business partners joel rafiti 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 uh who's an amazing person he was gonna come it just didn't work out uh for him this time but uh yeah we started it in may of 2021 and uh, it's just been growing ever since and like you know the, like like the title says we're here for the truth not i have the truth and so we're willing to have the dialogues and we're willing to, to dive into different areas. And 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 also, uh, I think a big piece for us is not it's not just the, the external truth in the world, like figuring things out, which is important. It's also like the universe that lies within, you know, and uh, the mystery of being human and, and what that means. And, you know, so I don't know. I like what we do. That's uh, that's the main, I guess, the platform. Yeah. I've been in the personal development, alternative health, truth, conspiracy, whatever world for, I guess, almost 20 years. I've been curious about a lot of things and I like to dabble and uh, yeah, uh, I've had uh, these two guys on the podcast multiple yeah. times. And if you're roofers, it would be here for the roof, oh. but the roof is on fire guys. Check out here for the truth. Cause it's badass. Dude. Mike winner. I love this guy. I He's love the you, best bro. dude. Yeah. Alpha Man. Vedic. You got to check out alpha Vedic. Yeah. Alpha Vedic. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I want to highlight, I want to highlight this. It's like, like, would this happen if we were shying away from living our truth? 
would we all be here if we're like, oh, you know what? Maybe I won't say that thing or post that thing or go down that area of research because what my mom might say, my dad might say, my friend from fifth grade might say. We're like, no, we look in the fucking mirror and we're just like, yo, this is who I am. I know who I am deep down. I'm on this process of discovery and I want to fucking go after the things I want to go after. Do the things that I have value to have value and put it out into the world. Oh. And then all the fucking weirdos find each other. <laughs> yeah, when the, the, the freaks come out, Woo! you know, the freaks come out. At uh, yeah, I will say uh, we also have a lot of fun doing this. You're awesome. And I have had so many great laughs at these events and uh, hanging out. Guy, man. Oh, man, I mean, that's just... a legendary event. Like anyone listening to this, come hang out with us June 20th and 24th. <laughs> I'm getting jealous. Uh, yeah, it's um, you, there's a resonance that happens jealous. when you're when you're <laughs> hanging out with with fellow brothers of truth and sisters of truth, and and it's beyond just like the quote unquote truth thing. It's a resonance of just pure knowing and and love, right? It's like we're here for for the right reasons, and we're here to express those in a way that um is sort of very divine and very uh on this on that same concordant resonance. So. It's just so easy to vibe out with each other, right? It's yeah. just, it, it, you know, and, and when you leave these types of events, you kind of come down off them a little bit because you're like, oh, back into the normie world where people are like honking at each other at the intersections and like just completely out of their mind and unconscious of what they're doing. And But that's okay because... I leave these events resonating the beauty and love and the wisdom and everything I get out of these and hope that I can at least have a little bit of that wear off and pe on people around me, you know? And I think the more that we can do that, the more we get new folks coming to these events that are just like, hey, I'm curious. I heard about this flat earth thing or I heard you're awesome. Most. I'm really in in interested in this like uh, human design that's that's appealing to me. And um, that's sort of like the gateway drug to <laughs> becoming one of the freaks. I guess. <laughs> Dude, I hear you, man. And I, I, I love, too, that like it's an empowering group, too. You know, we're, we're solution oriented. We're not just yeah. doom and glooming. You know, it's like, what can we do to create the life that we want to create and join forces? Yeah. You know, like your skills are not my skills and vice versa. And yet we come together and we build community that way when we honor each other as individuals. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, we got so many giants whose shoulders we can stand on. And I love to say this, but. The purpose of standing on the shoulders of giants is not just to eternally stand on their shoulders, but to learn to become giants ourselves. It's not perfect. And not you're, better you, view. you've got a giant hiding in you out there. Mm. You, yeah, I'm talking to you. A giant that may be hanging out with giant trees and elephants. Exactly. But yeah, the 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 giant thing. Um, Mike, second time meeting you, first time meeting this guy in yeah. the, in the flesh, and first yeah. time meeting Mike and and Curtis. You guys are yeah. awesome, amazing. You guys, this has been an awesome stream. Okay, I got a question for our four contestants here. <laughs> okay, do we want to stream a little bit longer? How many? How many in the stream there, Mike? Can you see that? Uh, long? Four, four, twelve. It's pretty stayed pretty solid. I'm down yeah. to stream longer. Do we want to keep streaming? Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Because here, here's the deal. Here we could we could all go over to Max Egan's bar. Right, right uh, shortly after, so we could stream a bit more, and then do that. Or uh, do you want to do that? We, or that, we just go to the bar now. Well, then, well, that means shutting down the stream now. <laughs> no, I'm enjoying he's, streaming he, a little bit. I don't know, maybe because I was watching for like he's warmed up. Yes. Plus, but, I like hanging uh, with you guys. Likewise, brother. I'll meet you. At the Crow House. Days. Okay. Okay. Right. Going to the Crow House. And Max Egan would be here, but uh, he runs a bar. And he's busy at the nighttime here at yeah, Anarcho Boco. Yeah. And we've all pretty much been there every night this mm -hmm. whole time. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Good, Good night, night, Mikey. Right on, Mike. Thank you. But folks, check him out. I put his stuff in the I put Mike's links in the, the show notes, but I also tweeted it as well. So uh as well as everybody coming in, I'm sharing their stuff. If you're not following me on X at off grid stone, follow all these guys too. And I've been sharing all of their stuff. Actually, I'm gonna share Alpha Vedic right now because I haven't done that yet. But I assume a lot of people who listen to me know Mike Winner and Alpha Vedic because I've been on their show a, a few maybe a few times. Tw twice. Twice. Yeah. And uh, you know, we th we think alike. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, the best place to join the Alpha Vedic community or to get involved would be on Telegram, probably. Or we did launch our new private uh, community platform on alphavedic.com, which is really a lot of people have been doing this. You, Curtis, you have your uh, Freedom Farmer platform, uh, which is a similar platform. And it's great to see uh, 
all these awesome creators developing their own online communities that are off the technocratic control systems, you know, not using the, I mean, even X. Yeah, I know I get X is sort of more uh, allows for everybody to come together in one single place, but I still don't like it. I still don't like it. I like being in the private if you can. And so, yeah, we created our own site. It's a new social media site um, that you can join. It's a community site on alphabetic.com in the private where you sign as the living man or woman when you come in. And uh, you're not coming in as your straw man. <laughs> you will. You can come as your straw man. I don't care. But it's just there's a there's a there's a wonderful uh, sense of ease and calm when you know you're coming into an online space that um, where you private. can be private and be yourself and all that. And I know you've been doing Freedom Farmers now for a couple of years. Um, yeah. And I'm sure you've kind of had that same resonance, right? That feeling of yeah, um, yeah, people coming in and, and and witnessing that. So I think that's a good thing, man. I'd like to be able to connect all these in some way. I've been wrapping my head around how I could maybe create some sort of Fediverse concept where it's all these different community sites because your Eurosimus has your Eurosimus and Joel from here for the truth. You guys have your own um, membership club. And before we know it, Matt, Matt Presti is going to have the uh, genius in a box club. <laughs> and, you know, so it's like, how do we, there is a, there is one side of that. That's a little Aquarian to the extreme of Aquarian, which is this sort of little pocket, little micro pockets of interest in these communities, which I think is great. But also I do think it's powerful when we all come together. So trying to figure out ways where we can be in the private, where we can collaborate and where our communities can kind of enmesh more, you know, and, and, and meet each other. And, 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 the, and the online platforms are all good. We all use them. They get us uh, somewhere, but ultimately the real, the real stuff is in, is in person. I mean, Coming here and hanging out with all yeah. you guys, that like, you cannot do this kind of I, experience I literally, online. I literally said the same exact thing in my in the talk I had with my wife earlier today. I was like, "Listen, I love that many of us have connected online, and we have these communities. But to like be here yeah. and to be like tactile and to hug each other and to yeah. be present and not just be in a square on Zoom or whatever mm -hmm. some platform like, yeah. and it's you can't you can't. There's no substitute for that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And, and and in a way we're commingling right now because we are in a square on Zoom, but we're also here yeah. at the same time. <laughs> and a lot of people are also hearing the things that we're talking about, and they resonate with you. You know, have you ever got that feeling when I I felt this today with your presentation the other day, brother? It, what you were talking about hadn't been articulated to me uh, in that way before. Right. You showed me some things that I knew. I know. I I. I my in, uh, getting into Steiner, I found a lot of parallels into what yeah. you were discussing. Yeah. But when you were showing some of the things, I felt a resonance in my, my, my body, and 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 just in when you when you talked about that 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 centeredness and the groundiness, that's just it it speaks to you as truth. And so words are so powerful because even people listening on something like this can hear what we're talking about and they can still feel the love because it is transcendent. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 when people hear these words, the, the word, the truth. The power, the logos, all these things, it it tunes you up, and that's how I felt when you talked about that that center, and that balance of things, and being the fulcrum. Mm -hmm. It's powerful. Thank you. Um, I think I should do a responsible thing and share my website. You should uh, absolutely. Uh, www.mattpresti.com. M a t t p r e s t i dot com. All my social links are at the bottom. Um, yeah, to your point, it's, it's, that's wonderfully said it, it, uh, this is a universe of love. It's founded on love and God is love, not a God of fear. I worship a God of love. That God is not only what creates my body, but powers my mind and powers my brain so that my mind can think through that brain and make choices because God gave all of us free will to do such. And with that comes a great responsibility. The four agreements are great, but I would say there we need five, and that would be take responsibility for your life, like Don Juan told Carlos. Did you explain the four agreements before when I was gone? No. You should explain it because they probably don't, they're probably not quite there with you. Oh, How, is that is that is that? But is that is that is that too, too much too much to unpack? Um. Well, everybody, the four agreements is like precursory reading for most anybody mm -hmm. in the truth movement. I imagine everybody's read it, so it's. But if you want to name them, you name the first one, and you name the second. I don't know. But, I, I'll um, admit I don't know them. Yeah. Um, don't take things personally. Always do your best. Um, I forget what the other two are. They probably come to. 
Uh, um, be impeccable with your word. Impeccable with your word. And um, always remember the four agreements. Yeah, always. Uh, <laughs> when you bring them up on a podcast, make sure you know them. Don't take anything personal. <laughs> don't take it. Well, he said always, that. Yeah, we said don't take anything personally. Be impeccable with your word. Always do your best. What's the four agreements, guys? <laughs> They're literally foundational here at Anarchapoco, too. And what what, what would be the fifth one again? Uh, well, I would add uh, take responsibility for yourself. Yeah, to that, me, that that, that's a hard thing to do. Saying. And, and if you lie to yourself even once and you try to think you can take responsibility, that's not responsibility. Yeah, no that... responsible person would tell themselves a lie and then have to cover it with a second one and a third and a fourth, which leads to self-destruction. I think that the, the the initiation ceremony into the death cult is to lie to yourself. Yes. And that eventually leads to total self-destruction. That's where the SRA and the, the, the all the yeah. dark stuff comes in is getting that compartmentalization in early. And uh right. Oh, the other um the, the other fourth, fourth agreement. The, the, other, the other fourth agreement is uh, don't make assumptions. <laughs> don't, don't make assume. assumptions. Yeah. Of course. So, you know, the don't, yeah. don't assume don't that you know the personally fourth thing is an interesting one. You know, like I don't know. It feels a little like bypassy at times. Like, yeah. but I don't know. Like, I'm surprised that in the four agreements that not to not take responsibility is it in there? For me, my whole thing in in the law and why I kind of call myself a I'm an anarchist philosophically, but I I don't want to say I want to say I'm a statist because I'm not, but the law is there the system is there and so what is that and it is about responsibility mike knows all about this in private communities private members associations it is about taking it all on it's it's i'm going to own it if you're going to be a real anarchist you have to own it because if you mail it in somebody's going to control control you if you're going to, if you're going to just be lazy hey it's like the american slogan give me convenience or give me death yeah. everybody wants that and 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 uh, Avocado Wolf talked about today of the 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 Luc is it Lucifer that's the one that's tempting the you to be lazy and then it's the uh, Aramon that's tempting you to be a bean counter and mean mm -hmm. I need more and more and more right so yeah I think self responsibility is at the foundation of all and even when we talk about the concept of health if you don't take radical responsibility for your life you're gonna always blame some invisible microbe for your sickness or you're gonna blame something else as opposed to hey what role does my mindset what role does the decisions that I make in my life in terms of like what environment I put myself in, what foods I put in my body, what people I surround myself with, you know, that's the most important thing in my opinion. Yep. Yeah. It's the whole part of growing up. That's what you're supposed to do when you become an adult yeah. is you're fully responsible yeah. because then that gives you all the freedoms and then you're not a beneficiary anymore. You are now the trustee in the trust because now you're responsible. Yeah. Now, and now you have all the freedom to make the decisions and to create. And unfortunately, most adults these days are still beneficiaries in the trust and they take their, they take their little benefits and their services and they're content with that. And the machine keeps rolling on. Well, and the the state all, all the state ultimately looks at us as children. Mm. Yeah. That's why Miners. why why I, the sort of red pill I had as an anarchist was when I started getting remedy in the law and going, well, why are they letting me do this? I thought the state just enforced everything arbitrarily. Because you yeah. learned how exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you don't want to be ruled, you have to learn the rules. And may I add a extra definition to the word anarchist? Yes. Genius. Genius is an anarchist. Why? And you can find this in my uh, ending the occult world with cosmic knowledge, 23 minute little documentary I made. But I say genius is an anarchist of the highest degree. Share that link and I'll put it up. After. Okay, cool. Genius is an anarchist of the highest degree. He doesn't follow the orders of anybody. He thinks for himself. He creates for himself. He doesn't create for others, but his inventions happen to help millions in many cases. But he's also that kid from Sesame street. One of these kids is doing his own thing. Right. <laughs> Sounds very, be that kid. Right? Sounds very Randian too. Yeah. And I'm, very, I'm going yeah. back to my childhood, but th those were the cool lessons before Sesame street started sucking. Yeah. But yeah. A that? lot of things were cool before they got infiltrated. Yeah. We can, we can make them cool again. Right. That's the whole yeah. point, but we've got to exert and start as, as Walter Russell said, mediocrity is self-inflicted. Genius is self-bestowed. What the fuck is everybody waiting for? Yep. Start yeah. bestowing your genius on yourself. Yeah. What Love are your it. thoughts on that? Too? What are your thoughts on that in regards to, I don't know, was it, uh, was it Rick Rubin or someone recently was on a podcast and he was saying the same thing of like, yeah, I make my music for me. 
yeah, like, yeah. happens to impact yeah. all these people. So like, yeah. I don't know. Like, well, I mean, if uh, as a DJ, um, I'm obviously playing to the dance floor, but I'm bringing my taste and my sensibility and my understanding of what is good. And I think I must have a decent taste because I've been pretty successful as a DJ. And I think if you're just out there to satisfy others, you're not a real artist. Yeah. Well, well, even as a podcaster, you know, Joel and I, we have the conversations we want to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They happen to resonate with people. We're yeah. not like, hey, who do you want to have on? Who do we yeah, think yeah, other exactly. people are going to like? And then we get to be part of the cool club. Row, row your own boat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah authenticity goes a long way, yeah. obviously, especially with, with in a sea of uh, mundane that we seem to be in these days. Um, and yeah, that's uh, Bear and I for AlphaCast. We just like pick what we think's cool like it's interesting we we get hit up by all those like uh you know podcast firms marketing firms i just delete them all i'm like oh no i'm gonna choose who's gonna be on our podcast based on who's cool and who's interesting and it's okay. seems to have worked out um but yeah no that i agree like it's we come to create and find ourselves and when we when we do that um it it becomes quite apparent that you're you're on the right path creating for the right reason and then that attracts the right people so Awesome. And Rick awesome. Rubin was surfing recently too. Did yeah. you see that? That footage? Oh, oh, the big beard. Yeah. yeah. He actually you know, I gotta say though, a guy who wears pink sun like the, the rose colored sunglasses, yeah. I, I I got I got my suspicions. You mean like the blue blockers? He's got the he's got the rosy sunglasses Rosie. like Jimmy Savile, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like Jimmy he, have you ever put on rose sunglasses? It's weird. Well, I haven't put rose, but I put on like blue blockers in the evening, but I don't sure. wear them like like sure. I don't know during the day or inside or wear sunglasses inside. It like, just trips cool me out. It just trips me out. I gotta say, but but hey, no, he he's a great music producer nonetheless. Yeah, for sure. I'm having a blast with y'all. Well, I mean, I'll tell you what, guys, people are trickling out. You know, we've been going. Uh, we are on. We're on two and a half hours. Nice. No, we're on. We're on three hours. I started at seven thirty. Yeah, we're almost yeah. on three hours. Sweet. We started with Mar uh, Marjorie Wildcraft. We had and we then David Avocado Wolf came in and then Andrew Kaufman came in. And, and I, I will so, tell you, folks, we were on the precipice of a major debate between yeah. Kaufman I and was uh, for Avocado it. I was Wolf waiting for it on the Ivermectin. And I did want to interject because I didn't feel that vibe was necessary for this one. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I felt let's save that for another thing. And then I said, hey, you know, what's a unifying thing between these two? Flat Earth. Boom. In yeah. comes Dave Weiss. You natural host, you. <laughs> I learned a yeah. lot. I watch him. <laughs> yes. It was the unifying theme, brother. Yeah. It was the unifying <laughs> theme. So thank you for that. What are you guys saying? You guys want to go to Max Egan's now or what? I'm down. We're going to yeah, Egan's. Dave Weiss is saying yes. <laughs> yeah, how do we do this again in the next couple of days? Well, maybe. Days. You know what? Maybe we will. Uh, but I don't know if to, we'll, let, we'll talk about it. Yeah, cool. I, I'm open. Yeah, it's fun. I'm so happy to connect with you, bro. Yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for it's sure. A lot of fun. So, okay, folks, everything that these guys have done uh, has been shared in that chat. Um, I I still wasn't able to to, to multitask to 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 add Alpha Vedic to that. But what what's on Twitter? What or on X? What are you at? I don't do X anymore. Oh, you're not on there. I I am, but I don't use it anymore. Okay. I, uh, Telegram T dot me forward slash Alpha Vedic or YouTube. Alpha Vedic or run all those streaming platforms or just alphavedic.com. And also, if you are feeling, feeling called to come and hang out in person and come to an event that, you know, is inspirational and uh, in with other like minded people that get it, come to Music and Sky this year. It's June 20th through the 24th in California. I know Cali Pharma. You know, I get it, um, but we're bringing back the light to Calif uh, California, and it's a great crew. Uh, your Osmos has been there. What going on your this, fifth this event? Is our fifth time. My wife and I uh, are going to be there and being a part of it, and you know we love it. It's one of my favorite events that you guys have created. You, Matt, um, Owen, like, and this is going to be pretty unique. I think this one. Yeah, we're building a village live through the event. Is it's a co-creative. We're we're at the point now where it's an open source event, and it's essentially inviting everybody to come co-create with us. Anybody can get stage time. You sign up for your stage time to be heard. It's going to be a bit of a sovereignty circus, <laughs> and um, it's definitely uh, I'm very excited about it. And I hope you guys can come check it out. And it's cool because it's like a really tapped in uh, audience that's super into their sovereignty, but also very much open to different spiritual insights and very creative so uh one day maybe this june we can get you 
maybe to rock out. Him and I are going to be maybe him and I are going to be at Confluence. Oh, yeah. in April. Oh, yeah. You're there too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There. Okay. Cool. Sweet. So okay. Should we give a shout out for Confluence? Give so, it uh, Eileen McCusick and Alex Zek, along with Molly um, Engelhart. Engelhart um are putting on an amazing event out on her in her ranch uh in the hill countries of uh texas during the uh solar eclipse in beginning of april uh april. yeah it's april 5th to the 8th yeah in hill texas hill country and that's a, on a huge regenerative farm huge yeah, regenerative right. farm and it's a complete to totality event there that's which is kind of trippy that her place was almost complete totality in the fall when we all went this is the second uh, round, and it's I think like 98, 99% totality. So, which mean just means you have a full solar eclipse uh, uh, above you. The last time in the fall, Eileen McCusick did a really cool tuning session during the eclipse. It was really, really fun. But I'll be DJing every day. Um, you're doing a talk, Curtis. I'm doing a talk. You're talk, and you're gonna bring your guitar. Uh, I got to deal with the TSA this time. I'm oh, going yeah. light, boys. Yeah, yeah. Flying to Mexico is just come one, come all. What do you? Turismo or business? That's it. Yep. That's the that's the only questions. TSA, yep. forget about it. Good cop, bad cop. You're over here. You're over here. Yeah. Nine hours later, put on the rubber gloves. So we're, we're, let we'll go. We'll go through. Hey, real where quick, we get your okay? Quick. Yeah. Uh, Chris Logics in my chat group asked how many people are here. I guessed about four hundred. What, what do you think? I thought it was about five hundred. I thought they said no. on day one it was five hundred. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I just want to give another I don't quick. Know if we're no. counting staff and vendors, but it's, no, I don't it's think pretty so. Crowded to yeah. Be. Oh, for yeah. sure. It's I just want to give a quick shout ahead. out again at Confluence. My wife and I will be there. We're going to be leading two workshops: one on like an intro to human design for those of you that are familiar with it, and another one on like nervous system and somatics. So, lots of reasons to come to Confluence as well. Cool. Fantastic. Well, with that, folks, we're going to head over to Max Egan's place and uh, carry on the the good vibes. Dude, thanks for uh, really having us, and it's nice to. To everyone listening, what's up? Cool. Yeah. And have a great night. Alphavedic.com, herefortheTruth.com, mattpresty.com, and philosophy.org for Walter yeah. Russell. Check it out. And Boom. Freedom and thank Farmers. You, Freedom Freedom Farmers. Farmers. Com. You guys know where to find me, though. <laughs> All right, folks.